Hello, welcome, welcome. I know, what is this? Wednesday? What? 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 It's not a normal day. This isn't a day that exists. I know, welcome, welcome. It is Fox. It is Model Making Guru. It is Warhammer Wednesday. Yes, uh, I'm doing a quick impromptu Warhammer stream today. Swig of coffee. I don't know why that's there. Thank you very much, Alex. Um, doing a quick Warhammer stream today uh, because everybody else is doing a stream today. And I thought, you know what? Why don't I just do a stream? So, yes, uh, Chris, uh, Colin and Dave are doing their paddy wagon stream at half four. I think it's the paddy wagon stream. Chris is doing a stream at seven, but I'm not sure what he's doing. Chris at Gross Models. That's Colin at first. I'll start that again. Colin at first to 67's workshop of the channel is doing a stream at half four. Chris at Gross Models is doing a stream at seven. And Ted at Skipper Scale Models is doing a, uh, doing a Ted, doing a stream at nine. And I thought, why don't I squeeze one in in the morning? So I thought I will do. So I'm doing this. I'm carrying on with some Warhammer Sunday stuff why not i've got lots to do anyway and it's a nice break from doing other things and painting other things at the minute so yes welcome welcome as always this is one of my typical streams where i will sit and twiddle and try and do some work while you guys hang out and have a good time in chat uh, if you are watching this and you can't see you can see there's an archive of the live chat there it's just starting to fill up uh, but if you're watching this and you don't know where you can join the live chat if you're not on youtube you won't see it you need to click on the youtube icon that's down here in the bottom right of the player somewhere underneath the video that will take you to the youtube page where you can join in the live chat and you should because it's good fun and it's all about having a place to hang out while i waffle on in the background yeah, so do come and join the live chat if you're watching it embedded on twitter or facebook or somewhere else you need to click on that youtube icon to come to the youtube page where you can watch and join in as always quick shout out to the people that make all my content possible first of all my corporate uh, sort of supporters emodels.co.uk and goblingaming.co.uk both of those companies are your one-stop shop for all your tabletop and model making needs do go and check out the links in the description below the video use those links it tells them that i sent you and therefore i get some income from that so do use those links and of course, to my patrons uh, at patreon.com forward slash model making guru, hint, hint, hint. And my YouTube channel members who clicked the join button at the bottom of one of my videos. They're on all my videos uh, and became a member. They all support me financially. They keep the food on the table. They keep this channel, all the lights on. They keep me in kits and equipment. So massive thank you to them. Without all of those people, this wouldn't exist. So, yes, we're going to crack on with this. We're making the Primaris Repulsor which I've not enjoyed so far because of fit issues. Not so much fit issues, but bad instructions that don't really work and things that don't fit together very well and poor instructions that don't tell you what you need to do. We're going to carry on with this today. I'm going to do the first thing, which I always forget to do, is take my socks off. Oh, so I might not get too warm because it's warm. It, it was cold this morning and then I've put all the lights on. And as soon as I put all the lights on and started the camera going and stuff, all the sun came out, all of the sun's outside. I think it's going to get warm, so I'll take my socks off now. Uh, let's have a quick look at chat and see who is in. <coughs> Excuse me. No, I don't expect massive viewing numbers today, because, of course, it is a Wednesday. Oh, Guthorm is in, by the way, monitoring your chat. It is a Wednesday, of course, so I, I expect some of you will be at work, but not to worry. Uh, we have, who have we got in chat? We have uh, Edward Leonard, says, uh, Model Making Mayhem, Raging Modeler. Both of those people are in. Um, Raging Model says, Woo, Spethel! Super Spethel, like and subscribe! There's Mayhem. Uh, model is innocent of something, but I don't believe that for a minute. Uh, Chris at Gross Models is in. He'll be, uh, oh no, I was going to say he's a bit at work, but I don't think you open on a Wednesday, do you, Chris? I think you have a Wednesday off somehow. Don't know. Um, or Draco, what in the name of Grandfather Nurgle is going on now? No plague vectors are expected to be unleashed today. Not doing space Maureens. And Nurgle will still be happy that nothing's happened. Uh, more Dracker is in. Welcome, more Dracker. Uh, we have uh, who else is in chat? Me, apparently. Hello, uh, Mayhem. Eon's car is in. Uh, talking about fried egg sandwiches in there in the chat. Uh, we have uh, who else has come in? Let's have a look. Uh, uh, Brian Windmill is in. Afternoon, all. Welcome, Brian. And that's everybody in chat so far. Chris says, "Indeed, I am home." So Chris has got day off today. Which explains his seven, which is why he's doing a stream at seven o'clock. Because normally he's back from work, but he's probably pooped having his dinner at that time. Sean Wiles is in. Welcome, Sean. But yeah, I don't expect massive hundreds of millions of views today, or live views anyway, while we're streaming, because it's it's a work day for most people. Look, my my new mug, my new mug, my time team mug. Oh, look at that, Tony. Look at the stratification on that. It's light, that's light. We'll have that. We'll have that. Yes, I got myself a time team mug. Mm. Anyway. I need to move my rug as always because it's in the way. Oh. 
Uh, oh, and I'll knock the camera. There we go. Brilliant. Just destroy everything. I'm not used to it being Wednesday. I'm normally having my lunch around about now and then even filming. Anyway, let's crack on. Let's stop banging cameras and making noise and knocking things. I hope you are all well on this glorious day. It's now beautifully sunny outside. Thanks, universe. I'm going to put on my uh, little viewy things so I can see. I've actually got myself some more of these little clip-on lenses uh, for my normal everyday glasses rather than my big thick bottle bottom glasses. And these are two times magnification now so I can I can wear my normal glasses that fit on me better. My my big bottle bottom ones, are the frame's a bit too large and it wobbles off my head and it's really heavy. So I can use my normal everyday glasses now for, for the building. So, uh, where we left off on Sunday, uh, we had, oh, I had just assembled the, hang on, I've got to get this right, the Heavy Onslaught Gatling Cannon. Heavy Onslaught Gatling Cannon, which has a scope of, of sighting computer on the top, which uh, you're given indications where to glue it, but you're not really given any indication where to glue it because it just says, eh, glue it here. And the only way I've been able to glue it to get it to fit on the actual cupola, on the turret, is by gluing a funky angle there and cutting a piece off. So I was struggling with that at the end of Sunday's show. I've now come in and tweaked it, and now it looks... I've sanded all the gluey fingerprints and things away. So now you can easily take it off and put it in. Because if you glue it where they tell you to, you can't get that in after you've glued it onto the weapon. So you have to do it. Really, no. It's just it's it's more vague instructions in in the in the instruction guide. So we've got an inaccuracy on one thing, and we've got vagueness. And I do hate that a lot of the Warhammer kits they go together beautifully, but there's always one part in the instructions where it's like, wait, I can't see where I'm supposed to glue that because it's round the back of something, and you've just got a curvy arrow going round the back. That's not helpful. <sighs> Candyman from Mongo is in. Greetings, everyone. Good morning, everyone in my time zone. Good morning. Tomcat181 is in. Not seen you for a little while, Tomcat, but welcome back. Uh, right, I'm going to put that there. Where shall I put this? I'll put that. Uh, I've not got space on this bench at the minute. There's, you can't see, but there's a lot of paints and things over there. For I'm in the middle of doing the Warhammer. Uh, the uh, Get my words right. Tabletop Trauma Centre. And it's got to the stage of starting to do painting. So, yes. Uh, right, so we've done the... Heavy onslaught Gatling cannon. Uh, now we need to assemble the rest of the turret. So I need to cut off the cupola. I've never discovered if it's cupola, cupola, or cupola. Although I have heard people say cupola as well, which is just so stupid. I'm pretty sure it's cupola. It's one of those words that it's just not a pleasant word to say. It, 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 I don't know who came up with the word, but it just doesn't. It's not a it's not a good word. It's not a good word at all. Cupola, cupola, cupola. I, I, I don't know. Needs to change that word. It's like, well, I was going to say it's like reticle because some people say reticule, but the people that say reticule are just wrong because it's reticle. I've seen people spell it r i r e t i c u l e, and that's just completely insane and wrong and not correct. Reticle. Some people that say reticule it makes no sense at all. all. Right, so we've got these three parts to clean up. <sighs> Cup holder <laughs> says Chris at Gross Models. Model maker mayhem says. Uh, chat is doing. Yes, it was epic. Says mayhem. I don't know what we're talking about. Oh, good show time. Team War says Brian Wimble. Yes, I'm going through it all now. I'm, I'm rewatching it all. I've, I've found a, a place where I can watch in very very low quality. Uh, all most of the episodes. I love Time Team. I love it more than you can imagine. If you live in the US uh, and you have Amazon Prime, you can actually get every episode of Time Team free of charge. If you live in the UK, you can't. The only place you can watch it is on Channel 4 and they've got adverts, which is garbage because it's the same advert every advert break. It's rubbish. So you can't watch on on 4 on demand or whatever it's called. It's really annoying. But if you're in the Americas, for some reason you can watch all of them free of charge, advert free, you get. I wish. I could get a VPN thing and just like, you know, pretend I'm American, that's the other option, I suppose. 
Anyway, yes, uh, very quickly, well, remember, don't forget, of course, today and yesterday, but today is the second day of Amazon Prime Day. It's a two-day Amazon Prime Day. Uh, that day when Amazon Prime members can get some ridiculous reductions on pretty much anything in store. If you've been, if you've been hankering to pick some stuff up, do get yourself to Amazon Prime, or to Amazon, I should say. If you've got a Prime membership, and you'll get some stupid, stupid deals. I got... Uh, a C920 webcam last year for £45. Normally it's like 70 or 80 quid, I think. Uh, now, do keep in mind, of course, I do have uh, a US, a UK, and a Canadian uh, Amazon storefront. As an Amazon associate, I do earn on selected purchases. They are my, it's my affiliate link. So, they are links for those are in the description below this video. If you do need to pick something up for model making and stuff, before you go and get it, you're getting something good for Amazon Prime Day. Before you go and snag it as normal, please take a look through my store. If you're in the US, the UK or Canada, please take a look at the link below. And if it's in store, snag it from there. It doesn't cost you any more, but it just means it does help this channel because it, uh, I guess I earn, I earn uh, a little bit on participating purchases. It doesn't cost you anything, but it helps this channel out massively. So do go and have a look. And if there's anything that you're looking for that's not in there, because I do have another section in each store, and the other section is when people say, can you add this piece of garden furniture or this book or this video game or something? There's a random other section. So if there's something you're trying to get and it's not in there, give me a shout. I can add it for you. Drop me a message in the boom hut. Do it in some way that I can actually get. If you put a comment on a video on YouTube, I might not see it for like three days. <clears throat> but send me a message on Facebook or something. Or Send me a message through my Facebook page or in the Model Makers Boom Hut. And I'll probably see that. Or if you're absolutely desperate, get one of the mods to like Chris or uh, Colin or t to send me a text message. <laughs> right, that's that cleaned up. Uh, but yes, use the links in the description below the video if you want to do that. You don't have to, but if you do, it would help. Um, and that then, if you use those specific links, it tells them that I sent you. Uh, and that's how it works. If you use just a random, if you just go to Amazon, then it doesn't help me at all. So that's my pimping over. I don't like doing pimping because I'm English. We don't do pimping very easily. If you do order something through one of my affiliate links, I'll probably apologise anyway. Being British, uh, I shall have a look at chat in a moment. Finding away the little nubulations. Abulations. This is my big. This is my big sanding sponges that Kenneth got me. Because it's nice if I use the things that people buy for me. Do 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 do. I'm apparently expecting a package today. Well, I'm expecting a package tomorrow. Chris at Gross Models uh, says to me, "Expect a package on Thursday." I'm like, "Ooh." He said, "Yeah." So he's bought, he's bought me something. I don't know what. I'm sure it's something very nice, and I'll, I'll say thank you very much now in advance. Even though it could potentially be like a you know, mankini or a silly cowboy hat or something, it could be anything. <clears throat> he assures me it's not something silly, but I'd, I've known him and Paul long enough now that I can't take their pleas of innocence as guarantees. <laughs> I'm not going to push you off that ledge. No, I'm not going to push you off that ledge. I'm falling off a ledge. Yeah, I've learned now. So, uh, but apparently uh, it's due tomorrow, and Chris sent me the map from Amazon saying. Oh, look, it's just round the corner from your street. So maybe it'll be today. And that was like, okay, that's cool. And that was about half an hour ago. Uh, and the little blip on the map that represents the little delivery driver, little little man in his van, it went past the end of my road. It came to the end of my road. You can see on the map. It went past the end of my road. He turned down the road that runs along mine, the, the road at the back. He went down there. This is, you know, dropping things off on the way. So he did a delivery just near my house, went past my road, went down the next road, <clears throat> dropped something off there, came back up that road, got onto the road that runs at the end of mine, and then just buggered off in a different direction completely. So we don't know. I don't know what's going on. If he had a road in the road at the back there, the road that runs along ours, and he had a, del a delivery, sorry, and a delivery on the road that's at the end of my road, why didn't he? Weird. So anyway, so it might not turn up today. It might do. It might turn up in the middle of the stream. 
Sadly. Has to go into quarantine. Mm -hmm. Yes, this is bits cleaned up. But I shall say thank you in advance to Christopher. Thank you very much, Christopher. Although I, I still have that little one percent doubt that it's it's not something that I'm going to be like, oh, you git. I don't know. I just know you and Paul well enough. You know, you you were both born with that kind of butter wouldn't butter wouldn't melt expression. Yeah, I know butter would melt. Thank you very much. Let's have a look at chat. <coughs> <coughs> oh, clearing my throat again. I do apologise. Uh, Tomcat's been slammed at work, sixty-five hours a week, five days, uh, six days a week. Gets old after a while. Worst part is I'm salary, so no overtime for me. Oh no. Sorry about that, dude. Uh, mm -mm. Because it's not Sunday, does this mean the chance of stability is now higher? And Mayhem says, I smell bullcrap with that one. Oh, no. That's about the overtime. Uh, the stability rate has gone up 100%. <laughs> well, Mayhem says the stability rate has went up 100%. I think what he means to say is the stability rate has gone up 1%. I will get you all speaking correctly. Much like from Borderlands, stabby stab, says Eon's car. Hello, I was going to do a Marcus impression then, and I can't do Marcus. If you find a better deal anywhere else, I'll have you killed. I can't do Marcus, never mind. Uh... I, can't get I can't get over time because of the chocolate of Lost Raptor, uh, but hourly people can. Okay. I stood in line for four and a half hours to cast my ballot on the first day of voting, says Candy Graham, in my state in the US, and sadly missed Team Inep's live stream yesterday. We'll watch it later. Well, you know what? It's more important that you cast your vote. If you are living in the US, by the way, please, for the love of dog, I don't care who you're voting for, just please, for your love of dog, for the love of dog, please cast your vote. Make sure to vote, whether you're voting remotely or in person or whatever. And if you do go to vote in person, please be careful, wear a mask, take care, social distance and all that stuff. But please do cast your votes. I can't stress how important voting is in any country. Well, there's some more than others, obviously. Uh, but yes, you should always have your say. If you don't vote, you can't complain about anything afterwards. But please go and have your vote. Did you just say you wanted a text message now, says Chris? No. You were missed, Candy. Uh, the team net thing. Your package is is now further away than it was, says Chris at Gross Models. Yes. It's just gone. Like you said, he's probably on his way to the airport now. It was literally like, there's my road. And there's the next road along. And there's a road here. And he kind of went, drop off. My road, my road. Drop off. Bye! And just drove, and it's like, oh, come on now. I'm sure there's a, there's a, I'm sure there's a, there's a statistical or mathematical problem called something like the delivery guy problem or the the mailman problem or something, which is trying to find the minimum number of stop offs, or a, a route that gives you the minimum number of stop offs, something like that. There's some well known thing in statistics or math, and it's like you've just destroyed it by being a spoon. I don't. The driver has to make a few more deliveries on the way to your address. He's just been past my address. <laughs> right, so this goes on here like this. Sorry, handbrake today. Uh, I can glue all this together straight away. I'm going to have, of course, the gun will be at a jaunty pointy uppy angle, because of course it will. Could you add some basing stuff in your Amazon store links, please? Uh, yes, I can, but I will have forgotten this comment within about 10 minutes. So send me a message on the... On the um, in fact, when you... If you, what I would do is send me a message on Facebook, but send me links to things so I can add them quickly. If you send me off to go and find things, then I'll be there for hours. If you just, if you look at for, look for some stuff that you want from Amazon, send me the links to those items. It'll take me like one second to add each one because I don't know what stuff you want and I, have, I, I can't sit there all day and add everything. So send me some links for things. Say, hey, please, can you add this? And I'll be like, yeah, there you go. It has been added. Please do your spending now. Like and subscribe. Ah, good. Good chat. Will do, mate. Yep. Just pop me some links, buddy. Yes, if there is anything you want uh, that's not in my Amazon store, because I can't have everything in there, obviously. I don't know what you want. Uh, just send me a link. Hey, Fox, please, can you add this specific item? Uh, and I, It takes me literally a second. 
over Christmas, I was getting emails, uh, text messages and emails from my brother saying, hey, Foxicles, can you add this? Can you add this? Can you add this? Like, wow. If you go into the other section on my, on my, on my Amazon stores, there'll be all kinds of random stuff in there. It's stuff that people have asked me to get. And, I, I, you know, not all of it's model making related, so I've got to put it somewhere. So I'm just like, yeah, it's in the other section. There you go. Like I said, it doesn't, doesn't cost you anything. It's no, no sort of hardship for you at all. It just means you're getting it from me through my link, and that really helps me out massively. You don't have to. You absolutely do not have to. But it's nice if you do. Right. I don't, I don't like doing that because I'm, I'm English. I don't do the, you know, give me your money thing. Uh, Amazon always go past my house down the end of the road and then come back. I assume they do it all of one side of the road first. It's quite possible. I assume they're doing all of one side of this town first and then coming back to me. I must be dead in the centre or something. <laughs> Problem with the delivery is he has got to go via his parcel list. Do you think he'd do it by area? Oh, I'm here. I have a parcel for two doors down. But he has to follow his route list. Yes. It was funny. We did a shopping order through Amazon Prime now. Uh, yesterday. I had a delivery yesterday. From Amazon Prime now. And... Uh, if you're in the UK, I don't know if it's all over the UK, but if you're in the UK up here in the north, when you place an order for Amazon Prime now, which is like base essentials, like, you know, bread, tomatoes, fruit, veg, tin stuff, basic food stuffs and supplies, um, you've got a choice. You can either order it when you place the order. The items either come from Amazon directly from their warehouse or from the local Morrison's warehouse. Uh, and you have to check out twice. If I go and pick like 10 things out, I'm going to order 10 things. They'll be split between Amazon, Amazon and Morrison, so I'll have to place the order twice. You place the order, you, you do your checkout, and then you do the checkout for the other one. And it was funny yesterday, because normally, um, you know, they come separated. Yesterday, like, the, the Morrison's guy turned up, delivered all the stuff, and the moment he drove off, the other one was behind him. Hi, got a delivery for you. Yes, you have. Right, well timed. Uh, right, so now we put the box on the back. That's that bit done. Exterminate! It's like a flat Dalek, isn't it? Have I knocked the camera into a bad place? No, no, there we go. I've knocked the camera into a bad place there. That's going to sit on here like this. Ooh. Okay, that's weird. It's unlike every other tank model in the world ever that has a little key and lock uh, design. This just, just sits on top. That's weird. I don't quite. It's very tight fit. It's not going to fall off, but yeah, a bit. Come on, GW. Were you were you having a was it a Friday afternoon when you designed this? Where's the key and lock design? It's not how these things work. Was this like the intern that designed this kit? I don't know. EC Idaho. What's happened? It's not Sunday. Just got up. At least I have coffee. Uh, yes, I'm just doing an extra impromptu Wednesday live uh, Warhammer stream because everybody else is streaming today, so I thought I might as well. It makes a nice break from what I was doing, uh, my tabletop trauma center build. Because even when you're enjoying something, sometimes you need to step away for a couple of hours and have a break. Uh, yes, the traveling salesman function, says Ian Thompson. Welcome in. Yes, I knew it was something called like that. Something called like that. Wow. Okay, now we have the cupola, which goes on top of the turret. And again, that seems to be the way with this specific kit. There's no official way to put it. It's just, just dump it in there somehow. No idea if it has a specific way to, to be oriented. Uh, it just shows it like that. It doesn't seem to... Oh, I'm not doing that. I'll have a, hang on, a, little, a bit of blebulon in there. Hang on. Blebulon! Let me de deal with this little blebalon. Am I on camera? Have I moved the camera? Where's the center point? Right, where's my center point? There's my center point. It's in the center, just about. There we go. <sighs> Visor down. Plenty of it. Blood the cowling. Yes, we've got this little bit in the side here. I just forgot to clean those out. Spoon. A yeah, little sort of bonus Warhammer stream today. Well, everybody else was streaming, and I thought, you know what, I could get a bit of that action, but what can I do? I said, oh, I'll do another Warhammer stream. It'll be fun. And then I realised I'd have to set up like an overlay and a, a new end type, a sequence, and a new preload sequence with the Wednesday bit. So I didn't mind. Didn't take that long. Nubulations. A bit of sandy, sandy. 
Remember, folks, I have got the chat here in front of me. You can see my iPad that Guthorm is carefully monitoring, which is wrong because his eyes there. And if you know birds, birds look sideways. So if his face like that, he's looking at me. Really, he'd be sat there like that, reading the chat. But then it'd be difficult for me to read the chat. Just anthropomorphizing. Come on, folks. You know how this works. Go with it. Yes, I do have the chat in front of me, so if you want to catch my attention, please do. Uh, I've got my viewing glasses on, my telescopic glasses, so I do need to flip those up to read the chat. So if I'm busy working, I might not see your comment, because they do whiz around. They're all blurry right now. So please do put your comments in big fat capital letters, so I have a chance to see it. Or if you want to, you can use a super chat, which is you use by clicking the dollar symbol at the bottom of the chat window. That puts your comment in a colour box, and I have a chance to see it then. Uh, let's have a look. Blem Yulon says Mayhem. This is correct. Oh, oh yes, truth says uh, Eat Inside Here. Coffee, because Mayhem says coffee is correct. Oh, yes, truth. Everyone is working on Warhammer things. Now I think I need to get a vehicle to build and paint. This is correct. Uh, EC Idaho, you need a Bane Blade. This is also correct. New load screen? No, Fox just looked out the paper letter stamper. I actually had to make that. I mean, it's like, it's not, it's not real. It's a graphic, but I had to, kind of, uh, well, I, I sat there and spent ages designing the kind of Dymo look take text stuff. And, and then after I'd done all that, I was like, oh, wait, I could have just downloaded a Dymo font. Oh, well. But I never thought of that. I just thought I've got to design like a Dymo sticker now. So I had to sit there and do lots of layers in Photoshop and stuff. And it turns out after I, after I check later on, it's like, oh, wait, there is actually a Dymo font. Oh, well. Never mind. Right, there is no indication as to exactly how this lines up. This is why I'm finding these instructions frustrating. It's probably not really that important. But it might be. I don't know. That's the point, you see. And not having the box art to look at. I can't tell you for sure. If that, but I'm going to guess this notch here goes in the middle. Because it's just as good as any other thing at the minute. Which would be about... Wait, are we on camera? Yes. About there. Oh, I think. I think that's about the middle. I will just have to assume, which is never a good idea, because as we all know, if you assume, you just make an ass of you and me. Let us glue. Don't need a lot of this extra thin. It's the beauty of it. A pot of extra thin will last you for, you know, a good, at least a year, if not a lot longer. Because you need so little of it. Now, another way you can get my attention in chat, by the way, if you want to, uh, catch my attention, is just to, to oh, do you know, my hands are being special today. It's just to at me, to do at Model Making Guru, and it'll pop my name in an orange box at my end. And I shall see all your wonderful words. All the words, the words. The words, the words. There we go, all right. Flip up. Visor up, reading away. I was thinking maybe this graph type. No, I had to do this because of the, the poor build quality. I glued these bits on and this wall and this front bit didn't fit together at all. And it, in the instructions, it says to glue that bit on. It's all right, but there's a lot of, mm, it's not my favorite build in the world. Bane blade's good. Yeah. Do, 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 do. Depends what you used to. If you used to build them like proper like World War II tanks and stuff like or modern day tanks, have a look at some of the Astra Militarum vehicles. Some of them are very uh, tankish. I mean, you, there's nothing wrong with this one. It's just, you know, don't glue this bit on. Glue the wall, the front and the side walls on first and then glue that in later. I didn't know that. Not with the instructions. Look out for the pintle mount option on the cupola ring towards the front or facing you want, says Mordraka. Uh, yes, that bit goes in that little slot there, which is why I've taken an executive decision that that goes in the middle. Because the only thing I can tell from the instructions is, if I move this, uh, is that this is there and that little, that little periscope's there and that periscope's there but it's not very clear exactly where. So with this little 
recess there, which I assume is the Pintle Mount section, I mean, Mount and Pintle, or Mintle as I tried to call it the other day, uh, then it makes sense it's in the middle. So we shall see. We shall see. It does seem to be. And of course, I will have the gun. Does it say in the instructions later on? Uh, yeah, it looks about right. I know there's some other stuff that sticks on there, so we'll just have to hope it doesn't get in the way. Because I've glued it now, it's too late now. Oh, vague instructions, my butt. Have your new flip-up rectifiers replaced your shark mouth optimizer knockoff, says Candygram. Absolutely, because that is a lot less obtrusive than a big thing. It's also a lot more comfortable, and it means that when I'm working, this has actually got higher magnification, but when I'm working, I can get this close, and you're not seeing my head in shot. If I had my visor on right now, it would be down here somewhere. And you just see that thing there. So if, for filming, it makes a life a lot easier for me. Because I can now get closer to the models uh, without having my enormous helmet of shot uh, of uh, telescoping in shot. Yeah. I was watching Ted's Bane Blade. This is very cool. Yes. Uh, it's a grav tank. Oh, it, it, Idaho says, but it's a grav tank. This is true. This is true. <clears throat> Build some custodies bikes, says more Dracker. Yeah, maybe. They're quite good. Uh, not my favourite build in the world, at least it's not a space marine bike. Yeah, well, yeah, there is that. But yeah, I mean have a look around. Have a look at some of the, you know, either Space Marine or Imperial Guard vehicles. They're really quite good fun builds. I would uh, recommend if you want to not spend a lot of money at first to dip your toe in. Get one of the um, land speeders. There's various ones. There's one with a couple of uh, space marines. There's one with like six dudes in it, and it's like that big. And it costs like twenty quid, like twenty pounds. It's dirt cheap for what you get. It's got far more parts than this, and it's like twenty quid. So you can't go wrong. The land speeders. They give you a good idea of what to expect without spending a fortune. Uh, two seven and one oh seven is what we need next. My son is doing a lot of Astra Militarum. Oh, okay. If you if you don't mind spending money, you could check out Forge World, but that's that's money time. There's some very good vehicles in Forge World, but you've got to like resin as well. <laughs> yeah. Uh, the desk's becoming a mess. Piles of things everywhere. Uh, right, we need two, one oh seven and seven. I'm going to have to guess they're all on this sprue because this is the last sprue. I hope they're on this sprue, otherwise we're a bit screwed. That would be a bit unfortunate, seeing as the other two sprues are now in the bin, outside the house. Two, seven, or 107. There's 107. Right, apologies, I'm off camera. I'm just desprewing. Do, 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 do. Anyway, I hope you're all well. Hope you're all fine and dandy. I am well on this fine day. I was awoken early this morning, before nine o'clock, I mean, I know. I was awoken early this morning by the doorbell going and a package being delivered for Mama Fox. It was some food. I need seven, don't I? Uh, which seven is that one? Uh, and it was, it was some food being delivered, but it was like, it was frozen meat. And I've never had, where's, where's part number seven right now? Uh, I've never had frozen uh, food delivered in dry ice before. It was it was in a cardboard box, and the cardboard box was in a foam box filled with dry ice. I've never even seen dry ice before, but I know what it is, and I'm like, oh. So what I did was when I got the food out and put the food in the freeze, put the meat in the freezer. I uh, I filmed. I got my camera out, and I dumped all the dry ice in the kitchen sink. And then I just ran the hot water, ran the warm, the hot tap into a little bit into it. And it was like, oh, this is brilliant. It was very fun. It was very, very fun. So I filmed that. I might put the video up later. Not brilliant. Only a minute long. But yeah, I was like, I have great fun watching all the carbon dioxide vapor tumble down from the sink, bubble into the sink, out of the sink and onto the floor. Now, of course, I know the risks. I had all the doors open. Uh, I was standing up well above the layer of the carbon dioxide. I'm not one of these chuds that there are people on YouTube and you see them, they get a load of dry ice in a bowl on the floor, like a washing up bowl, and then they pour hot water on it and they lie down to be lying to hide under the vapor because it looks funny. But what they forget is, of course, they're basically below the level of carbon dioxide, which sinks to the floor 
and they're breathing carbon dioxide, which will kill them. Yeah, don't do that. That's just stupid. So I was very careful. I had the, all the doors open and I was making sure that I was standing up at all times. So my, my breathing hole was well above the layer of uh, carbon monoxide, uh, carbon dioxide. And it was great fun. And it took ages as well. I stopped the camera filming, but it was like, God, there's loads of it left. I'm kind of trying to flushing hot water into the into the bowl to try and get rid of it and it just keeps coming i'm like oh i've been here for hours and then i got i got got it all flushed and you know melted away and flushed down the drain and there must have been some still stuck down the plug hole because it was still coming out the plug hole i'm like wow this stuff's never ending oh i got my mat this stuff is never ending I forgot my mat didn't i great fun but it's like, yeah, it's um, it, the box was like, must be delivered today. Do not delay, Mr. Courier Delivery Man. I've never seen that before. I've had stuff delivered in ice, but never in dry ice. <laughs> like it's an organ or something. Cool. <laughs> do, 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 do. Out of curiosity, of course, and knowing that I would only be doing one intake, I did I did put my face down to the level of the vapour and do an inhale just to see what happened. So it smelled like. And you, you can't smell it, obviously. Obviously you can't. Because it's carbon dioxide, you can't smell it. It was one inhale, just to see. I then stood back up again and moved myself to a, la a layer of safety. It's fascinating, though. It was amazing, watching it just all kind of tumble out of the sink. It was cool because at first I'm like, oh, I've been, it got me out of bed and everything. Oh, because the thing is, of course, when that kind of delivery appears early, that early in the morning, the porch is locked, all the curtains are closed. I have to leg it out of bed, leg it downstairs, unlock everything, which takes forever, and hope I can get all that unlocked and the curtains open in the porch before they get bored and drive away and take the thing with them. And when you when you're like fast asleep and the doorbell goes and you're like in massive adrenaline mode, it can be quite stressful on your body. So, yeah, luckily we stuck around, so it was cool. Uh, what are we doing? Uh, I've lost my brush. Where's my brush? I probably haven't lost it. I just can't see it with these glasses on. There we go. There should be a universal <clears throat> moratorium on deliveries before 9am. Especially the one that was this one. It was like 8 o'clock in the morning. I'm like, what? What was it we had delivered once? We had something delivered once. It was some kind of shopping delivery. And it was like it will be it will arrive between 7 a.m. and 9 p.m. And I'm like, what? Nobody's up at 7 a.m. And if they are, it's because they're going to work. They're not sitting around twiddling the thumbs waiting for deliveries. Nonsense. Uh. Now you might think I'm being a little over eager with these nubs here in this sanding. <clears throat> trying to get things nice and smooth but if you've not seen one of these uh streams before this is the warhammer conquest part work from hachette where you get 80 magazines with a load of bits in each magazine uh, and you build up a space marine and a death guard army one of each <clears throat> uh, and this is being partly funded or has been partly funded by my very good friend george who's also one of my patrons over at patreon.com forward slash model making guru uh and we're splitting it half and half because he's helped fund it he's getting all the space marines and i'm keeping all the death guard so i'm making sure i'm spending a lot of extra care and effort on the space marine stuff hang on it's clear my throat again one sec there you go yeah sweet good coffee mm. ah. Oh, Tony, look at that, Tony. Oh, that's right, that is. Yeah. Not the microphone. Kill the joke. I like my new Time Team mug. Time Team's the best. What was I talking about? Got no idea. Oh, yeah, so I'm taking a lot of extra care uh, with this. Obviously, where I get things like that, there's no way around it. I've had to get creative and do some battle damage, which George will be fine with. I've decided. George, you'll be fine with it. Don't worry about it. Don't give it a second thought. Of course, it does mean then that I have to apply the same kind of logic to the rest of his Space Marine stuff. 
So some subtle weathering here and there. Uh, Does mean I have to see how much I love George. I've got to be. Th I've got to do three Space Marine bikes in this part work. Yeah, yeah. That's how much I uh, respect and appreciate George's contribution that I am willing to sacrifice my mental sanity by building three, not just one, not two, but three, might even be four, I've forgotten now, Space Marine bikes. I mean, don't get me wrong, I'm going to kvetch about it like you can't imagine. You're never going to hear the end of it. But yeah, I, that's just how much. That's how much. Uh, George, my mate. When you're faced with when you're faced with something that includes three Space Marine bikes, when you really find out who your real friends are, if somebody wouldn't build you a Space Marine bike, then they're not your true friend. True test of friendship. Next time you're trying to give your your significant other a test of their affection, don't just say, hey, honey, do you love me? Just say, hey, honey, would you build a space marine bike for me? And if they were like, get to, get to F, then yeah, you, you're in the wrong relationship. If they say, of course I would, then you're in the right relationship. But they won't. So in fact, you should never ask that question because the answer always is get to F more often than not. I've got the sniffly nose again, haven't I? Hang on. Tissue time. Tissue time. Oh. One second. Oh. Ooh, sometimes I go from Captain Stabberty to Captain Snotterty. It's not good. Oh. There we go. Take that break to have a quick look at chat. Uh, I'm up at 5.30, Monday through Thursday, lol. Oh, yeah, but that's for work, isn't it? That's, you see, you've got to be up early. So that's what I'm saying. Most times, by that point, you'll be at work. The delivery is at 7 a.m. The only people, time, pe reason people are up at that time is because they're going to work or they're getting ready for work. Uh, Common Road Junction is in. Welcome, dude. Welcome, Archie. Uh, not just adrenaline mode. It's the panic and falling over as well, says Mayhem. Yeah, pretty much. Uh, Death Guard are the real SM, not the followers of the Corpse Emperor like the Death Watch who only target Xenos threats. What's SM? Death Watch hunt aliens and are part of the Ordo Xenos. The Death Guard are Plague Marines, heretical traitors is devoted to Nurgle. Yes. Yes, one of the armies. Did I say Death Watch? I meant Death Guard. One of the armies is Space Marine. One of the armies is Death Guard. You can have fights, you see. You get all the bits to play the game as well. It's a part where you get all the bits to play the game, which is kind of cool. So. Right, so this needs to go on here. Uh, not a good test for my marriage, says ECI Idaho. Yes, the perfect test for any marriage. Under pre-chocolate Velociraptor, I was up at half four. Oh, it's almost the day before. Oh, here we go. That's because Comrade Junction. What's the difference between... I'll say that again in English with more words and less drivel. What's the difference between Death Guard and Death Watch? Yes, Death Guard are... Um, space Marines who have been corrupted by Nurgle and are bad guys. They're like decaying, rotting husks under the control of uh, of the, the, the god of decay, Nurgle. Papa Nurgle. They're bad guys. Um, Death Watch are Space Marines. It's a chapter of Space Marines. They're like Death Watch. If uh, Death Watch is all the black and silver. Uh, armor they're all like best of the best aren't they death watch are like the sas of space marines they're like the hardcore delta squad you have to be like the best of the best to go and become death watch and i think if it's death watch if i've got that right uh when you paint death watch each death watch marine can have an individual um chapter marking i think because from that original chapter they can retain the iconography from their original chapter, I think, or something like that. I, I'm not that fully sure, to be honest. Right, this is being... I'm doing this wrong. I'm not looking properly. Right, that needs to go there like that. 
That needs to go like that, you see? Oh, I see, like that, you see? I understand now. It makes sense now. You know what? When you look at the instructions, uh, because you've not looked at the instructions and nothing fits, when you look at the instructions and actually find out what you're supposed to be doing, it can be helpful. Not all the time, because sometimes the instructions are not helpful. Yes. Yeah, so Death Watch are Space Marines. I think they're the sort of black and silver dudes. Is that Death Watch? Uh, the green skins are just an unrealized vector of Grandfather Nurgle's grand plan. <laughs> yes. I think he's asking for a scrap. Get my ooge chopper. That may have a bit channeling an orc. Uh, this needs to now be. Uh, uh, this attaches to that here. Like that, Bradlaw? Vague attachment points. Da -ba -da -ba -ba -da. Happy times. That's what's fairly simple, though. I can't knock him for this one. There we go. Try and get in the middle there. It might look a bit better. Well, then again, maybe not. I like it not being in the middle, but like lower right hand, bottom right hand corner. That's much more interesting to look at. And just having it lined up perfectly in the middle. I like it at a jaunty angle, offset. Makes things a little different. That's the antenna, or as we like to call it, the bit that breaks when you put this in your traveling box, in your storage skirmish case. This then attachificates onto the rear of the device, all the bits. Oh dear, a bit. I hope we get to fill those holes in because that looks a bit spudgy to me. Mm. Can't say I'm enamored of the big holes. Great big holes! Do 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 do. Not a big fan of the massive brush in regular Tamiya cement, but it will do. The reason I've done that is I've put the big fat cement in there, so I can squish this in, and the viscosity will allow it to stay in place. If I just used extra thin there, it would fall off straight away, because the glue is thinner and doesn't attach things better as well as fast. It's not stuck, it's not stuck with the glue, it's stuck purely with the viscosity of the, of the glue. And surface tension so while it's while it's on there it means I can get this glue on the go now uh, put that around there Ooh. put on camera yes just a touch here and there just to lock it down lock it down there we go that's on yeah, that's the butt area attached catered. Do 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 do. Death Watch are Marines who are seconded to the Ordo Xenos for a time before return to their chapters. Ah, cool. Death Watch retain the original chapter iconography on the right shoulder, and the left arm is fully metal blue steel. Yeah, it's got all the all the sort of the text scraped uh, cut into it. Or is that the? That's the ones that work with the Inquisition, isn't it? Ah, vaguely. Always funny to see a Space Wolf and a Dark Angel in the same squad, considering the rules back in 2nd to 5th edition. Yes. This is brightening up my day. Welcome, Paul. I should be working, but I can't be arsed today. You can type the word arsed in chat. I might not necessarily read out. It's not really a swear word anyway. I might not necessarily read swear words out, but I might do, because it doesn't really affect my monetization. But you guys can swear like troopers in chat if you want to. Don't bother me. Uh, yes, Fox is being a nice distraction this AM. I'm always a nice distraction. As distractions go, I'm the best. We, I'm, I'm not, I'm not the best. Right, now we have lots of many little things to stick on. This vehicle has a significant number of aerials, it would seem. Which means you can make this model, you can paint this model, but you can't ever take it anywhere. Because it's never going to go in your, in your box. <laughs> Uh, and as it's got a billion aerial sticking up, I may as well put the lids on the auto launcher boxes open. I may as well. Right, so we need, let's get some bits. Let's get some bits. I'll put that there for a minute because, yeah, it's going to take a while. Our mate Scott from Orkney. You need to get one of these, Scott, and paint it up as Israeli Defence Force. Scott likes his Israeli Defence Force. He 
he's mad for that stuff. Right, there we go. And I'll just get some of these bits off because I forgot to use my mat. I will actually as well, I must remember, set an alarm for four o'clock because I need to be off by uh, Colin at Festa 67's workshop. He's doing his stream at half four, so I cannot go past four of the o'clock. Uh, I shall set it for four o'clock. There we go. La, 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 la. Yes, I quite like it now. So we've got we've got Colin at half four. We've got Chris, Chris models at uh, seven, and then we've got Ted at nine, which basically means I can actually sacrifice the rest of my day now to playing Skyrim or something whilst watching their streams, which is nice, and, and not feel bad about it because I've got you know I'm, I'm working my way through Tabletop Trauma Center. But I also like to support my friends when they do their streams as much as I can, so it means I've got a valid reason for not doing any work after this. Okay, 110. 110 is the first part. 110. So first, find 110. New, new, new. There's 100. <laughs> I've only got one sprue, got one sprue, and I've got to find part one one zero, which is a small do hickey. Part number eight. I kind of roughly know what it looks like. We need both these aerials, don't we? Anyone get those aerials off? I can see them. Get these off first, shall we? Anyway, I hope you're all well. Hope you're all doing okay today. Uh, 110, 110, still need 110, we're all doing well, uh, I've got no gossip or anything that's been going on in my world that I can tell you about, 110, not 101, uh, here we are again, every time we do this, oh hang on, no, wait, I think we got it off a different screw, didn't we? Whoa! Sudden memory that we uh, we desprued two parts. Although I thought they were just greebles. We might have done. I might be doing this wrong. Let's find out. There we go. Get them in there. Get that there. Hello, Mama Fox. Uh, do we have a part 110? We have that's not 110. And get all these graph plates out. Now, you know what's going to happen though? It'd be like last time. Every time we do this, I can't find the piece. I go through the screw five times, can't find it. I go through everywhere else, and then I find it on the sprue. Do 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 do. No, I don't think that's right because we've got. Yeah, it's two packs, two rebels that we had in the bag. So it's, it's still somewhere on the sprue. Let's have a look. That is part eight. 35, 32, 10, 9, 34, 33, 24, 26, 106. There it is. Got it. Yes, told you. I have to go and look somewhere else before I find it where it's supposed to be. It is it is the order of things. I've lost it again now. Where was it? There it is. It is the order of things. So that's there. I didn't put that back in the bag. Oh, things falling and breaking. Oh, all kinds of desk based explosions. Right, that goes there, that goes there, that goes there, that goes there. Now we look for more bits. I need that tin back now. I'll just put it away. I need it back. Dear God, I'm hard work, aren't I? These two are extra greebles for later, but we'll put them there. Eyelash. 110. You've got uh, 108. 53. That's the pintle. Pintle, not mental, Fox. Pintle. I've seen that. Uh, I've seen that. That's in the place. And the place I saw it was there. 
19. You need a part nine. Looks like a traffic light on the instructions. Uh, the downside is that a lot of these parts are actually that way up. But the number's on that side, which does not help. Looks like a traffic light. It's actually a missile launcher, I think, but it could be used. If you for some reason had a bits box with a load of these spare, you could use them as kind of 40k traffic lights. Not that I think you'd want to or need to, but. 19 uh, and we'll need the other one anyway but we'll do that in a minute and i'll jump no point jumping ahead we need 76 and 32 or well 76 or 32. Mm, it's an, an auto launcher or a frag grenade launcher which is 76 or 32 which one looks cooler? That's the grenade launcher. It's got four. And 76 is, I can find it. Is it 76? Yeah, 76 is somewhere. Come on now, come on now. Find it with your looking. Find it with your looking eyes. Come on, it's a missile launcher. There we go. Is that it? No. 87, 88, 88. 84. 86. There we go, 76. Is, I think that one much more interesting than that one. Therefore, George is having this one. I'm going to assume they're missiles. I don't actually know. It just says auto launcher. Yep, could be anything. Let's find out by using it, basically. Is that even the right one? Yes. Seventy-six. Uh, there's gonna be one on the other side as well. Now you have a choice here. Uh, we need seventy-seven, which is the lid. Seventy-six and seventy-seven. So 77 will be, uh, one of these, there we go. You've got a choice now when you assemble this. I shall have a look at chat in a moment, bear with me. Uh, that's all the parts so far. You have a choice now, you can either assemble it like that, Which is boring. Sorry, not like that. Like that. Which is boring. Or like that. Yes, open with missiles showing. That I think of missiles. Of course, we're having it done open. Of course, we're building it open. Why would you build it closed when you can build it open? At the end of the day, it's going to be a nightmare to put into a into a skirmish box because of the aerials. I may as well just max out on that and do all the little open hatches as well. Yes, yes, I may. Right, quick look at chat. Uh, need more coffee, otherwise good here. Uh, people are all swearing, which is good. Model Maker Mayhem says with the with the um, Death Watch, if you add all different chapters, because it's all different people from different chapters. The original rules were that if you had them in your squad, you had to roll to see if they got along or had a scrap. That's the Space Wolves and the uh, the other ones. Because uh, they're the dark angels and space wolves don't like each other. They're kind of they hate each other. The history between those two chapters and their primarchs. So you had to roll a dice to see if they got along or if they fought each other. Uh, everybody's saying rude words in chat. Although my, mayhem says arse wombly, which isn't really a rude word. A Kaju hunter tank says EC Idaho. Oh, Japanese self-defense force. Yeah, that, actually, you know what? That would work as a kind of Japanese self-defense force pop from its hover tank, wouldn't it? Look like a futuristic Japanese DS, DF. Yeah. And then what you could do is, because it's Japanese self-defense, of course, you could paint it pink and have Hello Kitty all over it. Because, of course you would. 
Uh, Eon's cast is doing rather well, Fox. Excellent, glad to hear it. Uh, always nice and relaxing watching Fox actually do something. It's not very often, though, is it? Let's be honest. This is the way, says Mordraka. Uh, ah, but the memes. Fox is having a wibble. Am I having a wibble? What was I talking about? I've got no idea. This has a few more pieces than your average Space Marine, says Trevor Bradbury. Yes, there's three of these sprues. I've done the other two. Uh, welcome, Trevor, by the way. Welcome, welcome. There is actually a Space Marine in it as well. Dixie's head out the top. Uh, mental Pounted Bornstalter, <laughs> says Mayhem. Mental Pounted Bornstalter. Would that be a Mental Pounted uh, Gonslaw Atling... No, uh, Gary Hatling... Catling gun. I can't do it now. Every onslaught Gatling cannon. Yes. Maximum carnage death killy throw bullets device. Uh, maybe get the CIS AAT battle tank to make World War II Japanese army to go with my B1 Japanese infantry droids. Instead of diving into Warhammer. Now you should always dive into Warhammer. You should always get a Bane Blade. I would say if the two, the two things I, the best kits you can get, Bane Blade and an Imperial Knight, both are just going to be incredible. I mean, both are incredible fun. Bane Blade because it's a great big tank, and Imperial Knight because it's awesome. Also, Imperial Knight is one of the easiest things to paint. Uh, delivery update says Chris at Gross Models, and then Mayhem says update delivery. Yes, well done with the words, Fox. Thank you, Common Road Junction. Uh, is there something? Is there something in my porch, Chris? Because I'm 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 upstairs now filming I'm streaming now can't go downstairs. More Draca says Roger 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 Roger. I still want somebody to make a decent kit of a tactical droid. God damn it! Why can't they make a just tactical? Oh, I need Bandai to do one of their big like six inch figures of a tactical droid, not the not the one with three eyes, but the one with the vi the original tactical droid, the normal, the one that looks like something out of Mystery Science Theater three thousand with the visor. <sighs> They need to, oh, they need to, somebody needs to make that kit. I don't mean like STL files off Shapeways, because they're invariably not that good. I mean a proper like Bandai. I mean, imagine if Bandai did a, a tactical droid kit. Oh, God, that'd be a trouser tent moment, that would. Never mind your stormtroopers and your nonsense and your Boba Fetts and your, I don't need all that. I need a T, I need a T9 tactical droid. T9? Is it a T9? It just needs to happen. Also, they needed to have made sure there were tactical droids in more episodes of the Clone Wars than there actually were to cut the animated series. Every time I start watching an episode and I know there's, and there's a tactical droid in it, I get really happy because it's suddenly my favourite episode. I just love it. I love the voice. I love the way it acts. I love its smugness and the way it always gets its comeuppance. Brilliant. Perfect character design. Yeah. <sighs> Tactical droid. Somebody needs to make a decent tactical. Oh, yes, yes, yes. Oops, scritchy, scritchy. Anyway, it's even worse, Chris, because Chris, I was saying to Chris that when this package arrives, it's going to have to go into quarantine anyway. He was saying, just open it, just open it. And I said, I can't because it needs to go into quarantine. Or the, otherwise, Mama Fox will give me the stink eye when her packages go into quarantine for three days and mine don't. But the thing is, she's downstairs now. So she'll 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 sort it out. And be, she'll have picked it up from the porch. So yeah, there's no way I can pretend I haven't had it now, is there? See? No. No. Exactly. I didn't hear the door go. So I'm not sure it has been delivered or maybe it has and then thrown in the garden bandai has been too busy lately creating dragon ball z kits i uh, don't care about that it's just rubbish <laughs> nonsense i i know a lot of people like dragon ball z i actually find the art style incredibly annoying and i don't know why it just makes me angry it's the eyes the eyes just, i don't like the angular eyes no and the the, the 1990s style manga I just can't, it just makes me angry i don't like it don't like it like sometimes it's just aesthetics aesthetics of something just make you fill with uncontrollable rage for no real reason i need to do my nose again dragon ball z is one of those things what's the other one marvel comics uh pretty much old marvel comics not maybe the new stuff but 
The old Stan Lee style, I used to hate that. Uh, there was a woman that did loads of artwork for children's TV in the 80s over here. In the, in the 80s, funnily enough. Uh, when you had like a story and there'd be static images. Like a story time thing and they'd show static images. And there's some woman who did this artwork. And her style annoyed me greatly. And my dad used to work at Granada TV. Uh, one day I went there because he was filming something. And while they were filming some kids quiz show with Sylvester McCoy. I was hanging around on the set. Uh, they were also filming some still shots of uh, artwork. That's why around you, idiot. Because when, you, when you're watching a, a TV program, and it's like, you know, in those days it was a kids program. And it was like a story time thing. And as they're telling the story, they're showing like a screen of a picture. It was literally, the artist would paint it or draw it. It will be placed on an easel. And then the cameraman will point the TV camera at the e image on the easel and just take a couple of minutes of footage. And then that will be the that will be the image then. So I go with him to work and he's filming this, whatever the quiz program was, I can't remember now. Some kids adventure action quiz type thing. And I'm like, oh cool, Sylvester McCoy, that's cool. Yeah, he was Doctor Who. And well, I actually know this was before he was Doctor Who. And I'm having a great time on the studio, I'm on this set, and it's all like, I, I can't remember what it was, but I'm sure there was something to do with space, and there was like an asteroid, I was playing around on the set and messing about between between filming. And then I walked up to one corner of the studio, and there's all these pieces of artwork on these tripods. And it's like, oh, it's that woman, oh, I can't remember her name. I'm sure she's a lovely woman, but her just a particular art style for some reason, even when I was like 10 or 11, enraged me. It just, it just, oh, and I think it's because she used to do characters and then she'd draw them in, like it was ink and watercolour, like ink and watercolour little cartoon drawings. But they'd always have these, like you'd have the head and the hair and then they'd have these little dots floating around everywhere that didn't mean anything. They were just little dots floating about. And sadly, it's so long ago in the midst of time, I knew her name at the time, I'm long gone now. I can't remember what she was called, Polly something, or Toynbee or not Polly Toynbee because she's a journalist. <laughs> I don't know, some female artist who drew all these images. For, I think she did stuff for kids' books and for TV. I don't know. Anyway, I don't know. But, yeah, it just used to enrage me. I don't know why. I just got really angry. I was oh! <laughs> just So I just refused. I just walked away and refused to go back over that side of the... I had to explain to my father, like, can't believe you have to film that crap. There's me like an eight or nine years old, maybe ten years old. Can't believe you got to film that crap. It's horrible. Don't like it. Oh, with the dots and the, oh, I just didn't like her drawing style. It was annoying. That's just uh, Greebles. Pintle! We've got a little Pintle here. Let's clean this little Pintle up. There you go. Lovely. Am I on camera? Yes. I'm cleaning my Pintle. Don't look. Don't look. Oh, you looked. Oh, you little. Oh. Don't like it when you're watching, I'm cleaning it. I don't know why I'm doing that accent. Why am I, I don't know why I'm doing that. It's not even good. I apologise to everyone in Ireland right now. Where's my little mould line removal tool? This is where somebody in chat now says, yeah, that woman was such and such and it was me mum. And I'll be like, oh, <laughs> yeah. I uh, can't remember her name now, but it's, I don't know why. I'm sure if I looked at it, if I, if I looked at the artwork now, I mean, I can't remember what programs it was from. I can't remember anything about it other than it was the thing that enraged me. I'm sure if I look back on it now, it'd be fine. I'd be like, OK, no, I can. It's not that bad, but I don't know. It was in the 80s. So I think she was around in the 80s. You'd see it in. It's like whatever the, the Granada equivalent, ITV, well, not ITV then, the Granada equivalent of Jackanory type things was. I don't know why they I think they were just happened to be filming it, filming the shots of these pictures at the same time in the same studio. Because while they're in there filming the 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 quid, the quiz show thing for the kids, the, the, the quiz game show thing, um... They obviously said, look, we've got like six six static shots, can you just, you know, between... You know, when you get a few minutes downtime, just take a few shots of these arts on the boards, please. 
because it still wasn't that long this is in the 80s mid early to mid 80s it wasn't that long since things like title cards when you see a program and you have it back in the 70s and 80s like for example you're watching a program let's say it's a, a discussion program classic 70s style black screen white text discussion for today or whatever the program was you know the title of the program and then the black fades out and you suddenly see the studio with like two or three people sat in chairs about to have their intelligent discussion and the white text is there and then the white text fades out while you zoom and the camera is moving towards the people talking who will be doing the conversation uh, the way they used to do that is they would have uh, a camera pointing at a piece of card with the white text on it I, I, I can't quite recall what color the background would have to be which blue or green if it was before that I don't know but basically you'd have one static camera pointing at a card on an easel with the words and you'd have the camera pointing at the people in the chairs and this is old school editing the director would be there in the production bay and he would have the camera pointing at the card would cut in and you'd see uh, you'd have basically both cameras at the same time you'd have the camera with the text and the camera with the people sitting there but the sitting there the people sitting in their camera will be faded to black they'd cut the signal so it'd be black and then they'd slowly bring up the signal from the camera pointing at the people so they would fade from black to the people whilst at the same time the camera looking at the card wouldn't change until they decide and they needed to fade it out and then they'd fade that signal and that would fade out it's kind of real ramshackle heath robinson way they used to do these things and that's why when you see old programs and you see sometimes i do it on, on videos when i try and get that kind of ever so slightly transparent look to text on the screen when you used to get old programs and there'd be a caption or something like that and it'd be ever so slightly transparent it's because they were they were filming the text on a piece of card and they had to use the basic technology they had to kind of fade between the two or overlay it and of course there was no chroma key or anything like that back in those days but really i don't know how exactly they did it but they did basically it was all trickery and dark magic something like that uh, let's get these two i'll have a quick look at chat before i clean up these aerials uh, I made a huge spaghetti bolognese as Angus Allett uh, for the family for dinner, all devoured. Yes, welcome, Angus. Also, where's mine? If you make spaghetti bolognese, you've got to include some for me. Although, well, having said that, if you include some for me, but then eat it yourself, if, so if you make enough as if I was there, then that will be acceptable. That counts as tribute. So there you go. Round's complete. Time for water. Fox agreed. Dragon Ball Z zero interest to me and love anime. Yep, it just I found the art style. I've no idea what it's about. I've never had any interest to watch it. It hasn't. It sent its current location to your messenger. Okay. Uh, uh, Mayhem is solely tempted with the Kotobukiya Hexagear Mecha and also the Mega Man Zero kits. Check this one out for you, Tactical Droid Star Wars Legion Separatist Specialist Personal Expansion. What is that? Is that a model or is that? I don't know what that is. Oh, Star Wars Legion. Oh, you mean like, um, yeah. I don't mean little minis. I mean full on, like, proper this tall model figures because little minis are all right, but I want something this big that I can paint and weather. Oh! Because if I get like three or four of them, if I got like if Bandai did that, I could do three or four of them and get them all different colours. Paint them up like the ones from the show. Because the beauty of the Clone Wars animated series that I liked it so much is it looked like it looked like the kind of paint jobs we would do on miniatures. It's it's kind of hard to explain. Uh but it had that kind of painted model feel to the, the colouring and styling of the of the, the things on screen. They had this kind of loosely painted slightly rough around the edges color schemes and it had that kind of painted miniature look so i'd love to, i'd love to get some need to make some big tactical droid kits that'd be fantastic nobody ever will mayhem i may not know art but i know what i like 
Fox, the huge sad-eyed clowns just enrage me when viewing as well, says E.C. Idaho. Yeah, I don't like the angular eye shapes. They're just not right at all. They're wrong. They're just wrong. I wondered about that partially see-through text on old videos as well until I saw a program that cut away and showed the text rolling by mechanically on a machine that was being filmed. Oh yeah, I forgot that. If they were rolling credits, if it was a static caption, it was a piece of card with the text on it. If, like, you know, you'd have a piece of card with some letter set. It was often letter set or hand-painted, believe it or not. If it was rolling credits, the text would be on, literally. Uh, oh, did they do it on transparent film? It might have been on transparent film so that when you filmed it, all you saw was a text. Anyway, the, the, the text would literally be on either a sheet of card or, or transparent film that was a roll. And you would have like that. And you would roll it from one. You roll it that way. It was motorized, obviously. And as you rolled it, the text would move up. And then go onto that roll, like a blind. Uh, so that opening crawl in Star Wars, I don't know if that was done with computers back in those days. It may not have been, but if it wasn't, basically it would have been a, a, the text would have been on. Maybe Star Wars was a bit a bit you know more advanced than that. But if you wanted, like in the old Flash Gordon uh, serial 1930s serial days, where they had the same kind of text crawl that got smaller, that would have been a roll with the text on it, and they just put it at an angle, so it got smaller and smaller. Yeah, so rolling credits like that, they used to literally. That's why they're called rolling credits, because they roll the... You see what I mean? You see what I mean? It's good. <laughs> Nim is in. Welcome, Nim. Uh, that has four different tactical droids in the set. I, might, I will check it out, because it might give me a little bit of a tactical droid fix, but it won't be the same if it's that tall than if it's that tall. I just wish Bandai do, because Bandai do their big figures, and I want that. I want that. I want the tactical... I need it. I need it in my life. I need it. That's what I need. I need that. There are some STL files you can you can buy. Uh, they're all right, but they're kind of a bit rough and ready. They're not they're not fantastic. A little bit of a mold line going down the middle of these aerials. Nothing too major. I may need to use the knife blade because they're a little bit small. <laughs> Anyway, bench and belly time. I haven't asked that yet, have I? And we'll. It's 20 past two. Bench and belly. Of course, what are you working on? What's on your bench right now? It doesn't have to be a model. Could be a drawing or a piece of music or a floral arrangement or an origami or raffia work. Could be anything. Anything creative. What are you working on right now? You could be writing a book. I don't know. I don't know what you do. You could be working on a movie. You could be a movie type maker person. But yeah, what are you doing right now? What's your creative project at the moment? Um, Belly, what have you had for your lunch? Because it's, it's not dinner time, it's lunch time. What have you had for your lunch? Or what are you going to have for your lunch? Depending on where you are in this big wide world, of course. Because you could be anywhere. Uh, for lunch, I had a healthy, healthy Benicol cereal bar with white yogurt and blueberries. It was very nice. Put the lid on the glue. It's very nice and tasty. It's like sweets, but healthy. Good, uh, good cholesterol lowering plant stenols and stuff in that. It's designed to lower your cholesterol, basically. They're specifically for people with cholesterol problems. Uh, and, uh, but then I kind of followed it up with a hot dog because Mama Fox wanted a hot dog for lunch. So we may have accidentally eaten a hot dog each. So I like to think of that as a balanced diet. Filth and not filth together in harmony. That was my that was my belly bench of course is this yeah, get that nice and neat a uh, little bit of squishy squishy mm -hmm. I just get a knife blade in here because there are some very little delicate bits that I can't quite get the tool in there the seam line removal tool the mold line removal tool is a wonderful tool but if you've got little raised details like rivets it can be a bit of a bit of a cudgel something's just driven past the house and if i didn't know better i'd say it was a car with five exhausts every single one of which was blowing because i don't know what it was that just drove past but it did not sound good <laughs> Is 
do 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 so I can't quickly check though, Chris. So what's the update? Is it in Spain now? Is my parcel going to Manchester Airport? Is it in like you know Warrington or somewhere? I do apologise. I've got the right sniffles going on today. I've got like hay fever, but of cameras, I think. I never have the sniffles when there's no camera. I'm not on on telly, and I don't get the sniffles when I'm pre-recorded. Only when I do a live stream that I get the sniffles. It's like camera fever. I think that'll do. Remember, I'm being extra picky on this one because this is again for for George, so he gets all my due care and attention on these. Wait for the knife blade on these, I think. So some time. Scraping, 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 raw hide. Do 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 do. And what we can talk about. So what? Let me do my usual um, backup parachute question then. Because I can't think of what to talk about. Uh, let's go for the usual AMA stuff. Treat the chat as an ask me anything. That thing with dodgy exhaust is going past again. Treat me, treat the chat as an ask me anything. And ask me anything. No religion and no politics. And of course I will decline anything a, a bit too personal. But ask me anything in chat. Anything you want. It doesn't have to be about model making. Could be anything. No politics, no religion, and I'm not going to give him my bank details. Olves. That was a bit quicker. Using the knife blade. I try not to do that with the knife. I try not to use the knife blade to get rid of mold lines. Um, if I can avoid it, because it's it's not as nice and clean as using this the tool, a scribing tool, a, a seam line removal tool, but. There's some situations where it's more expeditious. I like that word, expedition. And also easier. Where there's lots of little tiny details. There we go. I'll do that one. Uh, I shall quickly just shave and shave. Whoop. Beep. Little bit of shaving. Do it this file, I think. It's a bit faster. Yeah, and then we'll have a look at chats and see what chat's doing. Well, we've got this one last piece to clean up, uh, which is this one here. Flat edges, so I can just use the magic file of filing. And filing will be filed. A little bit of filing, a little bit of sandulation. Uh, there's a little tiny, tiny bit of nub just on the bottom there. I'll put that there. I'll have a quick look at chat while I have a swig of water. Uh, the opening credits for Star Wars was done with the rolling credit thingy, says Nim. Cool. I mean, it was it, the the reason they did that was it was it, it was a big throwback to the style of the old Flash Gordon serials where they had the same rolling, uh, crawling text. But I didn't know if they did it manually like that because uh, it was 1976, 77. I remember. I don't know whether they did it manually or whether it was. Uh, Early primitive digital text graphics. Uh, bench now as house things. There's mayhem. Belly is rolls with fried eggs and bacon and some coffee. Yes. I hate using knife blade on mold lines, says Common Road, because sometimes I accidentally dig it in and it leaves a big notch on them and it's really not nice. Now that's the 99% of the time I will not use a blade for removing mold lines. Because this just gives you or similar products give you such a beautiful smooth finish and I've but there's just occasions where if you've got lots of rivet detail for example this will just take it all off or you've got little tiny pokey areas where you can't quite get this in but you can get a knife blade in so you you have to use it sometimes just as little as possible 
Uh, Nim says, bench a 100 scale stand for my master grade freedom. Belly, well, I'll read it as you've written it. A, master, a 100 stand for my master grade freedom belly. Commas people or full stops. Punctuation people, punctuation. I'm joking. Belly, I have no idea since I literally just woke up. Meat, meat or cereal. Mordraka, bench Typhus, the herald of grandfather Nurgle. Belly still getting through the half dog ah oh, half hog of bacon bacon yes uh common road junction cereal in belly and a raf bedford truck bf 110 and a german three-ton truck diorama i assume on the bench not in the belly uh, central manchester actually says gross models okay so it's never coming back then poor lines belly greg's steak bake and microchip oh that's just the filthiest of filth a Greg's steak bake, which is just just filth, and McCain microchips, which are just lazy filth. You just live in the good life there, dude. I tell you, I'd really want steak bake and micro. I've not had microchips for years. And oh, chips, McCain microchips, foul yet addictive. Uh, bench my work PC, but will be moved this evening, so I can continue. The word is vintage W. I just said W. So I can continue of the word. Hang on. I think there may be a bit of autocorrect here. I can continue of the word is vintage World War II ham arc royal. Oh, HMS, not ham, lol. <laughs> World of vintage World War II HMS arc royal. I like ham arc royal, actually. Imagine an arc royal made of ham. The good ship pork chops. <laughs> There's more than making ham to pull. AMS, ask me some things. Yes. AFA, ask Fox anything. Lynn Dipple says, what? Fox is live. I better get up. Hi. Hi, Lynn. Uh, Paul Lyons. That's my autocorrect. Yes. Ham Ark Royal. I like that. That's that's the official name now. I think everything should just have the word ham front of it. This is my this is my ham space marine transport. <laughs> ham Primaris. Right. So we need to do some things on. Yes. Yeah, so ask me anything. Uh, I just, it just means I've got something to talk about. It gives me a bit of material. Give this light a little bit. It gives me some material. Uh, you don't have to, but if you want to, feel free to ask me anything. No religion, no politics, but we'll take pretty much anything else. If you're watching this and you don't know how to ask a question because you can't see the chat, this is the archive chat. You need to be on YouTube. You need to be watching this on YouTube uh, to see the chat. It's usually to the right-hand side of the video. If you're watching this embedded in Twitter or Facebook or somewhere else, click on the YouTube icon that's down here in the bottom right. That'll take you to the YouTube page where you can watch. If you're on a mobile device or a tablet, it may be underneath the video. You might have to scroll down to see the live chat. I do recommend you watch YouTube videos in the in the in desktop mode in your browser if it gives you that option. It's usually much better than using uh, the app. I don't like the YouTube app. It's kind of garbage. Nothing actually works. Right. Let's glue some things onto some other things. Uh, it seems. That I forgot to get a piece off. Oh. 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 Right. This thing that I spent ages looking for. That goes here. I don't need this now, do I? Uh, this can be either this thing. Which is like targeting sites. Or a weapon, which I totally forgot to get off the uh, off the sprue. Which I think, given the choice between silly nonsense little lamps or a weapon, I think we're going to go for the weapon, don't you? I don't you think? I think that's the right thing to do in all situations. I think. Although having said that, this is where someone now tells me that if I have the auto missile pods, I have to have the sight and not the stubber. I, they don't tell you that. Uh, the auto launches, blah, 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 flaps down or up, no effect in the game. Do not glue the turret to the chassis of the repulsor tank. I might, I might not. You got your instructions wrong, so maybe I'll disregard everything you tell me from now on. I don't know. This is going to be a tiny barrel need to drill out now, isn't it? Oh, tiny barrel drilling. Right, so we think the mold line first and foremost. Yeah, I don't think the actual specific bits on your vehicle are really taken too seriously. As long as you've got, as long as you, I think the basic rule is as long as the weapons that you use are actually on the vehicle. Like you can't use a, 
you know, heavy flamer if your vehicle hasn't got heavy flamer on it. But if you like use a heavy flamer but you haven't glued on the, the sighting, the targeting computer, I don't think it's going to bother in gameplay. I don't even know if George will ever get around to playing uh, these in a game anyway. He might do. He might not. He might just have them looking pretty in his cabinet. You never, you never know. I say looking pretty. It's kind of an assumption I'm not going to mess it up. For all we know, I could make a complete pig's ear of all of these. And we still haven't decided what colour scheme he's actually going to have his Space Marines. What chapter. Whether he's going to have a real chapter. He did originally say he fancied salamanders, but I think the salamanders look boring. Because it's like a kind of brighty, brightish green colour that looks like it's been painted by a child. And then the black trim. It's it's not a pleasing colour scheme. It's not, not, no. As an artist, it's not a pleasing colour scheme. It's like felt tip colouring. It's just not pleasant. Plus the other problem I've got, of course, is half of the dudes on this have got Ultramarines markings on their pauldrons and greaves and things. It's like... <sighs> Like some of the name, like the lieutenant and stuff, they've all got like, I'm pretty sure if I remember, it's been a while, but they've all got like Ultramarines markings on their armour, which is kind of a pain in the backside, to be perfectly honest. Because I don't want them to be Ultramarines. George is an intelligent man, he wouldn't want them to be in, in, uh, Ultramarines. Because an intelligent man with taste and wit and sagacity. Right, so we need to do a little tiny bit of drilling now. The world's tiniest drills need to be brought out. Hi Fox, Warhammer Wednesday, nice surprise, isn't it? Zone, welcome, good day, bro. Good night. Uh, oh, delivery fun times, listen for the doorbell. They don't, they often knock, but then they just not really. F Amazon, they just, they just, actually, they just dump stuff in the porch most of the time. They don't even knock. How big is this barrel now, apart from that tiny? Oh, tiny. Okay, this is going to be interesting. This is guaranteed to go horribly wrong. Pull these back away again. I've not heard the door. Normally they just open the porch, put stuff in the porch and bugger off. Uh, the problem is, uh, we have in the, in the porch, we have a doorbell on the outside of the porch. Uh, and then on the inside of the porch, it was ages to figure this out. On the inside of the porch, we have like a little solar light that, you know, when somebody opens the porch door, it sees the motion. It's a motion sensor thing, and it just kind of turns a little light on. But it's a little thing that just hangs on the wall. But it's got like a little square bit for the light, and then this white sensor, little white half circle sensor. Unfortunately, a lot of people look at it and think it's a doorbell. So what we realized was happening after a while was they would open the porch. And they would think that there was a doorbell there and they'd press that button. Of course, it's not a button. Nothing would happen. And they wouldn't press the doorbell on the outside. So some of them then would knock because they didn't get a reply. But in this day and age now where nobody's signing for anything because everybody's, you know, especially because we've got a big thing on the door saying social, self-isolating, please just leave things in the porch and bugger off. Um, we're not being asked to sign for anything. So they just dump it in the porch and go. At the most we get a knock uh, and sometimes sometimes they do ring the bell so we've actually removed that little lamp now because it's kind of a bit pointless uh, if they're just mistaking it for a doorbell it was kind of a pain in the bum we've got a different light in there now there we go have i actually <gasps> almost almost in the center but not quite now i could widen that with a bigger drill bit but it's such a, th a fine barrel that it's going to be too risky I'm going to risk going around the outside a bit, I think, and breaking it. So what I'm going to do instead is just tidy that up. Do it the old-fashioned way with the old knife blade of happiness. And by happiness, I mean painful stability. I'm going to widen it a lot, just a little bit, just a smidge. It's actually almost in the centre, which is good. It's just not quite wide enough. So yes, yeah, so we remove that little bulb, that little lamp thing. And now they do tend to, if they do do the doorbell, they do the actual doorbell outside. But it's not hardwired in, it's like a little thing where we press the button and it sends a little radio signal to the thing that's on the window ledge inside that rings, that does the bell sound. 
But the funny thing is, occasionally, obviously after a while, the battery starts to go in the doorbell bit. In the uh, the bit that's inside, not the button. That's got like a little, the button's got like a little watch battery that lasts for years. The bit inside is just a couple of AA batteries in a, in a box that makes a noise. And occasionally the battery starts to go. And it's dead funny because normally the doorbell is really loud. But every now and then it'll be like, you'll hear from downstairs. It's like, normally it's like bing bong, bing bong. But occasionally it's like, where it makes this little kind of like mewling sound like because the battery's on the way out and it's, it's it can't do the doorbell and it'd be like oh that be the door then i need to clean my lenses now my flippy lenses they're covered in schmutz it's quite funny and i think the problem is of course uh, the batteries don't last very long in the doorbelly bit because the bit on the outside where you press the button little sort of you know watch battery that only needs to use power when you press the button so for you know 99% of the time during a week it's not using so it can last for years the one indoors of course is constantly monitoring for the radio signal I would suspect it's probably using a tiny amount of charge a tiny amount of current for a little receiver that's permanently on to listen for the to be ready for the button press so that doesn't last as long uh... Oh, he will drive past again. Uh, at least it's not Hermes. It will be on the roof, says the Reggie Modeler. Yeah, actually, well, e models tend to have started using Hermes now, and it's uh, occasionally, and it, they've actually been all right lately. Yodel is still garbage. Yodel will just throw it out of the vehicle as they're driving past. Now he stopped at the end of your road. Uh, well, I have this awesome show on a big 42 inch telly and a 45 minute commercial propped up. I skipped it. I want to watch Fox, not some camera commercial. Yeah, 45 minute commercial. Oh, terrible. Uh, I need to sniffle my nose again. Sorry, folks. Yeah, I don't mind that, you know, one or two minute adverts on YouTube. When I watch my friend's streams, I turn my ad blocker off and I'll sit through the adverts because I always do that. Even on your streams, Chris, I do that. Oh. And I don't skip. But sometimes they do give you an advert, and it's like half an hour, and you're like, what? I mean, a half hour advert? That's not an advert, that's a program. I don't mind like one minute or something. Two minutes. Maybe even three. Because three minutes is like a typical UK advert break anyway. Delivered to the porch, apparently. Oh, yeah, they've just dumped it in the porch in that case. I've heard Mama Fox get up, so she won't know. They just put it in the porch and went. <laughs> well, I may need to go for a wee in a minute anyway, so I might go and have a quick look and bring it in. I won't be opening it on telly, but because it needs to go into quarantine, of course. But I shall look at it with my eyes, with my looking eyes. Right. Uh, let's get these bits glued on. Let's glue it on. So we've got that weapon that I've just done, the barrel nicely drilled out. There you go, that you can't see. Look, how out of focus is that? All out of focus. That can now go on the front there which I shall use the fast setting glue. Or shall I? No, I shall, I shall not use the fast setting glue. I shall use the normal glue of normal people. So I clearly need to fanny around and find the right location. Now that goes there. There we go. Glue-a-tron. I'll flip my lenses down, Fox. I'll be able to see better. Oh yeah, look at that. I can see now. Yep. That's all. Much better to have another gun than some poncy targeting thing. Uh, we have the pintle. A little bit of pintle. You all right, pintle? Yeah, pintle. Hot pintle action. Yeah. That's going to go. <clears throat> How does this go? Like that, I say. Like that, you say? Oh, excellent. I should use the super speedy fast glue for this. If I can do it fast enough. If I'm super speedy fast enough. I think I might be. I might be able to juggle it. Oop, come here you. Don't you get lost again. Get that on. Let's be pintle. Sorted air. Sorted. Not straight there. There we go. That's straight. Gentlemen. Oh, it's not. Yeah, this is where I see now that my little... My little cupola is not quite centred, but it's centred enough. It's near enough. George will never know. 
Now, you see this little ring here? The little ring there. Don't ever, ever, ever throw that away. Don't ever throw it away. It sits down there. You push it in. Sometimes it will fall out. You push it back in. You never throw it away. Because if you do, the vapors can get out of that. That's the, extra, the fast setting stuff. The vapors can get out. And I was sat here one day. It fell out and I just, I'm, you never worry about it with the regular and the, the thin cement. So it, it fell out one day, I just threw it away. Yeah, whatever. Because it always falls out the lid. However, on the regular and fat cement, it's not a problem. But on this thing, on this stuff, the vapors just work the way out. And it still spills. If you if you tip it, it'll, the glue will come out. And I was sat here and I was in space. And I'm like, why can I smell that glue? It's giving me a massive headache. It's because the um, the seal had thrown it away because it fell out. And I'm like, oh, I don't need that. Threw it away. Yeah. But, uh, I needed it. If you've got the fast setting cement, do not throw that little bit away. If it falls out, put it back in. Now, what I had to do, because I didn't have it, I threw it away. I had to take one out of a spare one of these, put it in there. So it's not exactly fitting perfectly now, but it'll, it'll do. Don't ever throw it away. I've done it again. I did both of those aerials. And I've got a choice. I've got a choice of aerials or moisture evaporators. I think, to be honest. Given a choice. I didn't realise I've done both. I didn't need to do both. Oh, well, goes my grievance bag. I think that those two. I'm thinking that one. Because it's far more interesting to look at. Far more interesting. Always go for the one that's much more visually interesting. That's my mantra. There we go, that's that glued on. Or the aerials in the world. Yeah, that's it, such a thing. Squish it down. Squish it down. It actually sinks down a little bit when you put the glue in. If you're making this, you can push it sits quite comfortably, but you can push it a little bit further, it kind of sinks down into the into the box. Uh we've got the traffic lights. Which I've got here. Which go thusly. I shall have a look at the chat in a moment, peeps. Can quickly go on there. Regular cementing times. Oops. You have a lot more time to get the piece and stick it on with the regular. Uh, I've bent the pintle now. I bent me pintle. You have a bit more play time with the uh, regular cement. I bent my pintle back a little bit. It's quite painful. I don't want to put the gun on that pintle until uh, it's had a good chance to set, I think. Now, the thing to keep in mind when you're doing this, if you, I've always said I'm, I'm a painter, not a builder. I'm always acutely aware, and I'm doing these filming of me building things. And you, you might not see it on camera, but there's all kind of glue splodges and shiny bits and rough patches here and there. Now, if this was normal tube cement, I'd be beside myself with stress because that would be garbage. That would all need sanding back and cleaning. But because this is extra thin cement or the extra thin fast setting, of course, when you prime this, my nose is going again. Good God, woman. When you prime this, you're not going to see any of that. Oh. Because it's just a, it's just a, it's just a, it's not really got any height to it. It's just a, a shiny area or a slight texture difference where the glue's wiggled with the plastic a little bit. But be rest assured, if you're building and you see that, don't get suddenly panicky because you've got shiny bits and not shiny bits. It'll look fine. You'll be fine. Once it's primed, all that will disappear. Now this goes on the side here like this, you see? Which, of course, looks vastly superior now we built it with the with the actual missiles showing go that yes we haven't decided on a, on a, on a chapter for for, uh, for the space marines for george yet i hope he goes for something interesting but also something not far too complicated i mean the easiest option would be to go for ultramarines even though i hate to say it the easiest option given the fact that some of this stuff is branded with ultramarines markings all over it would be ultramarines because then you're not having to scrape off molded details which always looks a bit garbage 
But, you know, George really wants a load of water marines. I don't know how. Old. I don't know. I don't know, you know. Right, so that's that bit done. I shall lift up. Easy as that. Let's have a look at chat. <gasps> oh, Ted's in chat. Why is Ted not at work? How are you doing that? How are you doing that, Ted? Shouldn't you be playing with boats? Welcome, Ted. Big hugs. Ted makes everything better. Uh, wonder what Chris said. Fox says mayhem. Paul Lyon says his Pikachu hat. Thoroughly really washed, I hope. Don't drop it into the glue either because it will disintegrate, says Junction. Uh, comrade, yeah, don't drop the, the ring piece. I just said ring piece, didn't I? Oh, never mind. Moving on. Where's Paul when you need him? Uh, welcome, Ted. You're too early. You're on at nine, says Chris. I thought I'd give my computer time to warm up, says Ted. Yeah, good idea, says Chris. So, yeah, Ted... Ted's only come in because he's got to pimp his stream later on tonight. We all do it. <laughs> we don't really. Uh, but yeah, Ted's, Ted's funny because when we do a Monday night show, a Monday night e-model show, we always come in at the last minute and get all oh, get into the hangout at the last minute. But Ted always does it at the last minute. But Ted's computer takes like 45 minutes to get going. <laughs> so it's like, oh, Ted, please don't turn up with five minutes to go. Hang on, I've got an update. Oh. So if ever there, any of us suddenly gets like a Windows update at the last minute, it's Ted. Just before the show, because he doesn't turn it on other than then, so. It's certainly fun. Ow. Um, ask Fox anything. If you could make your own Space Marine chapter, what would it be, or who would it be? Um, I don't know. I've kind of got to do that anyway, because I'm doing my Principality of Xeon-themed army, which I must admit, I've kind of gone off the idea of doing that now, but I started it. Well, I've not really confirmed, committed to anything yet, so... I was doing a Principality of Zeon themed army. And I might go back to that. I don't know yet. I had plans of like getting the Space Marines painted in shades of green to look like Zaku's. My Scions were going to be a red outfit with um, gold trim and white boots and gloves to look like Shah. Shah's outfit. And they'd have a silver helmet, if you pardon the expression. Uh, and other bits and bobs. I've not, I've not fully decided on that yet. I wasn't what I wasn't sure what colour to make the bog standard Imperial Guard troops, really. Um, I didn't really know. I know for some things I'd have them painted like. Um, I wasn't really sure what to make the Imperial Guard troops, but I don't know really. I, that's what I've not quite. I might dump that whole idea and just abandon that and just paint them something better. I might just paint my dudes in traditional colours. I don't know yet. Uh, Mojo busting at the bench on my day off says D Ted. Yes. Looking forward to your upcoming live stream, Skipper Scale Model. Yes. What are you doing tonight, Ted? Are you working on the Universal Carrier? Is that what you're going to be playing with? I assume it's not a Bane Blade stream, obviously. Uh, right, I need to go for a great big wee. So while I do that, I will go and check, uh, get, make, get that parcel out of, the, out of the porch. Now, unfortunately, it needs to go into quarantine. It has to, so for a couple of days. Um, so as long as it's not like an organism or food, it should be all right. Um, so I shall put it into quarantine, but I'll, I'll, I'll let you know when I come back. So let me go and have a great big wee. When we come back, we'll cut any buttons working. Yep. Uh, when we come back, we'll carry on. Let me turn the microphone off. You don't need to hear me having a wee.
Yeah. it on. Package received. Thank you very much, Chris. I shall open it in due course. I want to open it now, but I can't. It's got it's got to go into quarantine, so <sighs> frustration. Uh, where are we? I plan to do some figure painting tonight, as promised. <gasps> bum, bum, bum. Are you doing the Bane Blade dudes or the guys from the Universal Carrier? Ooh. Lindipple says, belly, golden grams and cereal. I'll say that again. Golden grams cereal, or grams, as the Americans call it. Golden grams cereal, milk, uh, sweetie, has corn and baby lima beans. Sweetie's her bird. Uh, bench, metal, earth, Star Trek, Enterprise D. Jolly good. What's Ted's doing figure skating? Says Mayhem. Uh, Lynn saying hello to everybody. Do, 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 do. Model making mayhem throws model th throws. I'll say that again. Model making mayhem throws raging modeler on the roof. Don't he'll start singing fiddler on the roof again. Yeah. If I were a rich man, yeah, but he'll, he'll be off. Don't put him up there. Anyway, twenty-four hour quarantine will be about right. Typically, we give it three days just to be extra cautious. I have to be super safe for Mama Fox, you see. I can make no assumptions. Uh, with whose hands the package has been through. Right, so we've done that side. But thank you very much. I shall open it very quickly, as soon as I can. And I'll let you know. Thank you. <clears throat> it's this big. I don't know what it is. It's not very heavy, and it's that big. So I don't know what it is. Be anything. It's clearly not... Well, it's not a life-size Jar Jar Binks cardboard cutout, thank goodness. <laughs> yeah. Uh, quarantine, just microwave the parcel on high power for an hour or so. It should be all right. Oh, yeah, I like the sound of that. When I made some hot dogs for me and Mama Fox today for lunch, I got a couple of uh, hot dog buns at the, at the freezer because we because we, we have to depend on online ordering for everything. I can't just go to the shop. Um, so we're having to order bread, like get three or four loaves of bread and put them in the freezer. We don't normally do that, but we can defrost them in the microwave. But, of course, I've not quite got the hang of hot dog buns yet. <laughs> We've, so normally I put a piece of bread in there for like two minutes and then it goes if we're having toast or something so two minutes defrost and then into the toaster it's fine or just bread so, but I put these hot dog buns in for six minutes because they're kind of big and fat so I thought six minutes will be fine they came out nice and soft and squashy and really warm and I thought oh they're nice and defrosted put butter on them waiting for the hot dog when I've hot, finished cooking the hot dog and came back they just got rock hard I'm like oh that's not supposed to happen so I know next time maybe not six minutes eh Maybe just four minutes might defrost them nicely enough. Right. Next we have... Uh, we have to do an antenna. We have to do... A, or a box of something. Another missile battery like that. Traffic light thing. And uh, another auto launch. I think we'll go for the auto launcher again. Because of course we will. <sighs> I wouldn't microwave it. I know what it is, says Gross Models. Well, do you know what it is? Of course you do. Puppies don't like that, being in the microwave. <laughs> it's interesting, they're called hot dogs, yet are made of chicken and turkey. Or pork. Uh, or if it's German sauce, it could be anything. It was that, or I throw you in the hedge, Raging Model. Yeah, but if in the hedge, he's not going to sing Fiddler on the Roof, because nobody likes Fiddler on the Roof. Let's be honest, nobody actually... Oh, nobody under the age of... 80. I actually likes Fiddler on the Roof. Seriously, it's... No. Uh, right, so we need to get some pieces. So 55 and 50 fewer. 55 and 50 fewer. Should I stay or should I go? If you put a glass of water in the microwave with the rolls, it is supposed to keep them soft because you're hydrating the bread. Ooh, I like the sound of that. Mayhem says, great, I want hot dogs now. Thanks for that, Nim. I'll try that next time. A little glass of microwave saved glass of water. Because mm. when you do bread, it's only a couple of minutes. Um, and that's long enough to get the ice, you know, get them defrosted. They're a bit still a bit, little bit cold, a little bit moist, but then they go into the toaster, you see. So. Right, so we need 55 and 54. Let's find. Visor down, 55 and 54. We have uh, 55. We can have a little radar like thing or like a little radar dish or we can have a simple box with some glowy lights in it. A bit like with that stubber on the front. 
we're not just having a simple box with lights when we've got a choice of something awesome instead. So we'll have our little little rectenna. And I also like the fact that it's like a little antenna array, like a radar array, but it's also got the Imperial Eagle wings on the back because of course it has. Of course it has. This is this is Warhammer. There isn't a flat surface that doesn't have, doesn't have wings or a skull on it. And it's, you know, if you've not got a skull on it somewhere, you're not doing it right. Uh, 20 again for the little launcher array, which is uh, somewhere. It's. It is. In a place that I don't remember. There it is. Got it. Cutting off the sprue now, sir. And see my name in an orange box. Give me a second. I'll have a look. Yep. Oh, that's the name talking about a glass of water. Factoid Starsky Paul Michael Glazer starred in Fiddler on the Roof. Ah. I can walk. I can walk down the road a bit and get myself a hot dog from a local place that grills them over charcoal. Says Nim. I live in the wrong place. Raging modeler. Ooh, model making mayhem. So I made another biscoff yesterday. Put it on 10 a.m. 4 p.m. when I left. Two slices left. Yeah, there wouldn't be two slices left if I'd been there. My teeth don't allow me to have sweet sugary foods. I don't care what my teeth think. I would apply that sweet sugary food to my entire face, pretty much, basically. 79 and 78 again. 78. My teeth don't want me to have sugary foods. My teeth are idiots. 79 and 78. There it is. I'm kind of finding them quicker now. There's my name again in an orange box. Ah, that'll be the wall. Uh, Thor bread on power for 5 to 25 to. Hang on. Thaw bread on power 5 for 25 to 30 seconds. If not fully thawed, warm up on power 7 for 10 to 20. We don't have that. We just have a button that says defrost and then we put the time in. And I figured out two minutes on defrost, which is about 20% settings, I think, uh, is fine for bread. I think for, for finger rolls like hot dogs, I think maybe three or four minutes would be fine. I found that two minutes two minutes is fine for a slice of bread, three minutes for a crust, because it's a bit thicker. So four, maybe five minutes for a hot dog roll, maybe. Uh, I sometimes have little pita breads, and I get three of them out at a time if I have like a ricey dish. And three pita breads, six minutes is spot on. So it, I, I had to. I should have done it for five minutes, really. Not two finger, two finger rolls, four and a half, five minutes. I think. Fine. Uh, auto launcher, yeah, that's his stick. Okay. Okay, a little bit. All right, so I'll put that over there. It's clean up time. I can't see. I've got my lenses down, and I'm trying to do things at a distance. How we clean up the parts, yeah, that's his stick. Let's clean these parts. It's a US thing. If you're ever in my neck of the woods, Fox, it's a place called, funnily enough, Ted's Hot Dog. <laughs> oh, it's not Ted's Hot Dog, it's my hot dog. <laughs> I, shall, I shall do a Google search for Ted's Hot Dog. Uh, I'll tell you what I love doing, though, when I'm watching TV, when I'm watching a program on TV. If something catches my eye in, in a in a program, I'll try, I'll always, I'm one of those people, I'll go and try and find it on Google Maps. So watching Time Team, for example, uh, is fantastic because I can go and look at where they've done the done the dig as it is now, 20 years later. And the good thing is, if you go to the um, if you go to Wikipedia, where if you go to the Wikipedia pages for Time Team, where they list each episode, they give the uh, GPS coordinates for each site for every episode, which is kind of handy. Um, but I love doing that. But one thing I've, I did once, I was watching I was watching The Sky at Night. I think it was The Sky at Night. And uh, Maggie Adderin Pocock was there and she was talking to camera, but she was on the campus of some... She was on a campus of somewhere. She was clearly on some sort of scientific campus, either university or a science place. Um, and But... The, I managed to find it. I think she. I think she vaguely said where she was, but it was some some place where it's a massive like university campus. 
but in the background i could see like a 1950s um like silver line no so uh, uh flows what were them old 50s american caravans called airstream gulfstream so whatever they call anyway one of them done up as a hot dog stand but in bright red so i got on google maps and looked up on the university and went through the street thing i was like right i found it i actually found that thing so i knew exactly where she was filming i just i don't know why i always find it fascinating if i see something like in the background i'll go and look at the real place like I, when i'm watching bones for example i was watching bones last year uh, and every now and then they'll have a scene where it's something is taking place on a street somewhere not on the not on the closed lot set because that's a bit different that's a that's a pretend street but every now and then in bones or something like that or the west wing as well they'll have a, a scene that's filmed on an actual proper street in the real world so <laughs> I don't want to go and try and find it. It's great fun. Because sometimes they'll walk, uh, what was it in Bones? They'd be driving along a street in Bones and they'd drive up somewhere and you'd see in the background a store with a name. And like again, it wasn't the clothes, this was in the real world. So, you know, like, you know, Michelson's Furniture Store or something. And you'd, you'd go, I'd go and look it up on Google Maps and find the actual street. And it's great fun. I don't know why, it just fascinates me. It's just an amusing little thing to do. So it often takes me like two hours to watch a one hour episode. I'm farting about on Google Street Maps and Street View and Google Maps and things like that. The time team's great though, because you can look at where they did the dig. Uh, there was one place they did and it was like some amazing site. And they, I can't remember what it was now, some Roman villas and stuff. And they're like, this is amazing. It's, it's like a... Uh, an unheard of thing it's the most amazing thing ever it's going to be a very important site for the next 20 30 years going forward it changes our view of romans in britain and you look at it now 20 years later and it's car park it's just like really it's sad really i can't remember what it was now but yeah it's a bit of a shame Uh, Ted has his own sandwich shop. Too many jokes writing themselves with that. I have an overwhelming desire for a hot dog grilled over charcoal. I think everybody in chat now really wants hot dogs. Uh, we've still got like, I've got three tins of hot dogs. They're big, proper, not crappy ones. They're big, decent ones, just in tins. And the advantage you can have to take two out and then leave the rest in there for later. We've got four left, four, six left in the tin and we've got six hot dog buns left. Grilled dogs on sub buns with the sauce and onions and bacon and cheese. Oh. And the cheese is melted in gooey or airstreams. That's it. Oh, we're now, Tony. We got this mock beer. You see, now what we're going to do is fire it. There's mayhem. Bratwurst, says EC Idaho. Don't mind a nice bit of bratwurst. Bratwurst. Although I've got to tell you, I've never been to Germany. I'd love to go, but I've never been to Germany. But in Manchester, every year, not this year, obviously, uh, they have the German market which is basically outside the town hall in Manchester. They just have this big, massive market for about a month. And it's all German themed. I don't know why we have a German market outside. I don't, really don't know why, but we do every year. And it's basically lots and lots of like tents where they sell beer and Wurst. And that's kind of it. And there's a few stalls that sell things and, you know, just bits and but It's mostly just like a hundred beer tents and a hundred Wurst uh, tents and i remember going there one year with some people we we're like let's let's it was like a work thing like, let's take the day off work let's all just close for the day we'll all go to the manchester uh german market get absolutely spanned drink all the beer in the world and eat all the food in the world it's not just you know versed stands they sell all the other stuff as well but so we went there and it was great but it was the first time i'd ever had curry wurst curry wurst yeah that's, that's good. oh man i could have eaten curry wurst all day and apparently Currywurst is the most popular sausage in Germany, apparently. I am advised by my by people I know in the Germans, German place. Apparently it's the most popular sausage in Germany. And I can understand why, because it was like, oh my god. Because they're all they're not just like people they're actually proper German traders uh, and German vendors. So they're selling proper German beers and proper German meats and dessert uh, delicacies and stuff and it's like proper proper worst 
And these currywurst were just the best. They were like, oh, I need to eat all of these. And when you've been there for like three hours, and it's it's the middle, it was the middle of November, so it was icy cold. We're all wearing big, thick, woolly everything. It's minus 400 degrees. Uh, beer is ridiculously cheap. And even though it's all fizzy lager crap, I don't mind in that situation because it's the only choice you've got. And also, it's it's just, you've got all the burst as well. Oh, proper, like, burst and hot dogs and with the burst in them and you've got the sauerkraut. Oh, God, I was so fat the next day, but I felt brilliant. It was just the best thing ever. There won't be one this year, sadly. And it was the first time I've been to the gym in market. I'm like, why have I never been here before? Why, why am I not going to come here every year for now at this time of year? Because it's just, even though it means I'm outside with people, I can, I can take the hit because of all the meat products. Of course, nowadays, nowadays that wouldn't be an option for me, really. I mean, it might be an, as a, as a one-off treat, maybe, with my cholesterol levels. <laughs> yeah, wouldn't be such a great idea. But as a, as a one-off, maybe. But sadly, not this year. Cleaning up this little pintle for the radar thing. And using the knife blade here because it's too small to get the mold line tool on. Too many sticky out bits. I've got to blade between tiny little details. It's not easy being green. It's not easy being green. I can't sing all that for copyright, obviously, you fool. Do 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 didn't seem to get a lot of questions from the Ask Me Anything thread earlier on. That was a bit of a washout. Now there's many things you'll never know. Because you've never asked me and I can't answer them. Remember? Anything you want, no religion, no politics, but ask anything else. And if I can, I will answer. If I can't, I won't. Obviously, Bob's. So yes, my plan for the evening today is uh, finish this at four o'clock. Uh, and then for half four, I will sit down with Skyrim and uh, Colin and Dave working on their paddy wagon. I think they'll be working on. So I'll watch that while I'm playing Skyrim. That's the good thing about, you know, live streams like this. If you've got, I, I liked, I like things like Fallout and Skyrim when I'm watching live streams because watching a live stream where somebody working like this is, is fun and everything, but it, it's the kind of thing where you can go off and do something else at the same time because it doesn't really matter too much what I'm doing here. More like a radio show with some, I happen to have pictures as well. So I do, I do the same thing. I'll, I'll have, I'll have the stream open on one monitor. I'll have the chat open on the other monitor. Uh, and I'll have my Xbox on playing a game. But Fallout and Scam are great because you can just wander around the landscape. And there's not, you know, you can avoid dialogue and stuff. You just wander around the landscape and do what you need to do. Whilst listening to the stream and watching it and keeping an eye on the chat at the same time is great fun. I recommend it. Probably about the most multitasking a bloke could do, of course. But you need to have a game that you can be just you can not you know you can it's like a, you need a game that is just where you can just pootle like skyrim or fallout you couldn't be playing like call of duty or something because then you're not you're not paying attention to the live stream it's very important for me to actually watch the live stream but also uh doing other things at the same time it's like listening to a podcast really it makes it makes it like listening to a podcast i love doing that well, like I said before, it's good now for me because it means it gives me an excuse. Because I can't sit and do work while I'm watching or listening to someone stream because I'm, I'm totally de dedicated to the work I'm doing. I'm not really paying attention to the show. So if I can play a game, that means I can sit there and basically play games now for the rest of today. Uh, where are we up to in chat? George is in. Hey, George. It's coming along nicely. One of your babies. Look, see. I'm choosing all the weapons for you. Uh, I've chosen that you're having this launcher that may be missiles, but it doesn't actually say. We think it's missiles. We've decided it's missiles. Uh, you had a choice between a little nonsense load of lights or a gun. So I gave you a gun, of course. I chose the most interesting aerial for you. Not even on camera. The most interesting aerial uh, array. Uh, and uh, yeah, looking good. Coming on nicely. Your little uh, vehicle. I've also chosen, instead of little flashy lights things, uh, a radar dish. 
because again it looks vastly more interesting uh, but i hope you're doing well george uh do -do. Re i really i thought it was the old time team says lynn what oh um lim says look up a channel called timeline world history documentaries they have new uk based time team the last one was on the isle of jersey never heard of them but there's no current time team actual proper time team because i subscribe to the actual time team youtube channel and they're not mentioned it it might be like a rip-off of time team there's a few archaeology programs i'll have, to have a look uh, Ooh, i used to go to the german market at christmas in glasgow i tried all the worst i couldn't eat for two days after it was so full as man it was the time of my life yeah it's great beer and sausages the Germans have got it just right. Beer and sausages. Like in here in the UK and Britain, especially in England, you go to the pub, you get trolleyed, you might stumble out and fall into a McDonald's and get a crappy burger or something on the way home. We don't do it right. In Germany, it's beer and sausages. I assume it's not, but to, from, from our point, from an Englishman's point of view, beer and sausages. If I could go out of an evening to the pub with my mates, get absolute spannered, and then come home with like a, a, a hot dog that's like that wide and that long, and it's covered in all the things. Oh, sauerkraut! Oh God, I'd just be—I'd be dead by now. But it'd be great. Uh, cold German beer, hot German food, topped off with mulled wine. Oh yeah, there's a lot of the mulled wine as well. Do they still have free paper crowns at Burger King, which are supposed to be for kids, but are inevitably worn as a goof by college students? Uh, I, there's no Burger Kings near us. I don't think we've ever had those. Really, I thought it was the new, the old time. Oh, hang on, I'm lost now. <clears throat> Timeline World History. Oh, hang on. Oh, yeah, I, no, I, I do know that channel. Uh, they just show documentaries about history, but it's not ones they've made. They're just like an aggregate channel. Right, it could be. There's a lot, they see a lot of stuff from Mary Beard and things from it, but they're all just like BBC documentaries and other, uh, other things. They may just be showing old time team. Because Time Team hasn't been in production since 2014. They stopped, it finished in 2014. And then Mick Aston died shortly afterwards. So uh, they may just be re rerunning old Time Team. But uh, yeah, you can find it on there. But if you are in the US, just go to on Amazon Prime. Just do a search for Time Team. There's two, there's two things. There's Time Team Classic, which is series one to ten. And then there's Time Team, another like channel if you were in, in the in prime which is series 10 to, to 20 i think for some reason they split it into two everything up to series 10 they call time team classic but it's all on there amazon prime members in the us we don't get it uh ask fox anything what food would you love to try to have i'd like to try to have every food what food would i love to try um i don't know there's probably plenty of foods that I don't know. I've had insects, so I can't say insects. Uh, I've eaten quite, I've eaten quite a lot of different things. Um, I don't know. I'd love to try proper Japanese food from Japan in Japan, like proper, proper Japanese food. Uh, but that requires going to Japan, and that's never going to happen. So, yes. Best Space Marine chapter color scheme to paint. Uh, it's Ask Sintazone. Um. I've only painted a few, so I don't really know. Uh, I, 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 I would like to try. I've had a plan to get my silver Templars that I got with the with the conquest. I've got a plan. I had a plan to do my silver Templars um, using C1 metalizer, but I haven't quite fully realised how I'd do that yet because there's a few issues with trying to do that. But that will make it incredibly fun to paint. They'd have to be clean and shiny. Couldn't make them weather. That's the downside. I think the I think the silvery ones are the metallic ones, like the uh, the, uh, the the Inquisition ones that are all uh, silver. I can't remember what they're called. The Grey Knights. I think they'd be interesting to paint as well because the silvers and you can get sort of blue tinges. Angry Marines. They'd be good fun to paint. So they would be the best because you can. If you do the Angry Marines, they're the best ones actually. I'll, I'll refresh my answer. The Angry Marines because they're not official, but you get to you get to paint swear words on your models. Also, you get to custom build like a Rhino with a launcher that launches smaller armored vehicles. I saw one which was a Chimera with a rocket launcher array on the back, but the ro the rocket launcher actually had a Rhino on it, and it was basically launching a Rhino full of Angry Marines. 
It was a tank that launches a rhino. Great. And there's the over-the-shoulder marine launcher, which is a bloke there with a massive missile launcher on his shoulder that he's holding, like man-portable, and it's firing another space marine. That's the angry marines. Uh, okay, school run. Skylar, catch you all at nine, says Ted. Take care, Skipper Scale Models. I shall see you later on this evening. Make sure to do go and watch Ted's stream at 9 p.m. tonight on Skipper Scale Models. He's painting figures, but we don't know which ones. Uh, I just like to watch the live streams. I don't have enough room in the TV tray to have my laptop and the Metal Earth. Ah. Uh, in the English language, you could use any word to get me... Uh, start again. In the English language, you could use any word to mean get drunk. I, I, I got absolutely windowed last night. You can. There's two things in English that are great. One, you can use any word to mean drunk. Spannered, battered, sponged. Blammed. You could just make a word up. I got absolutely pomulated last night. But you can also use any word to mean boobs. Although it's usually offensive. But you, as long as something ends in a mangas or a dangas or a nangas, anything like that, look at the manangas on. You, you can make up a word for boobs. And kind of, it's kind of understood what you mean if you're talking about boobs. Just it's kind of sexist there, so it's not that cool. But yeah, you can use any word to mean drunk. I got absolutely trolled. I got absolutely parking metered. Yeah, it's great. Uh, Mayhem says, Spanner, trousers, sloshed, gas, paralytic, stewed, monoculus, miraculous, to name a few. What's the worst movie ever made to you? Asked the Raging Modeler. Um, I've, watched, I've watched Battlefield Earth. That was bad. However, however, and it's kind of on topic, I would have said Battlefield Earth is the worst movie ever made. But since since I watched Battlefield Earth, I have watched um, Warhammer Ultramarines, that CGI movie that came out about 15 years ago. Uh, what was it I think it's just called Ultramarines. The one that's got um, Sean Pertwee in it. Stand Sean. Um, that's the worst film ever made, ever. Uh, they have to I have to say that. I think it's Ultramarines. I've actually blanked it out so much I can't remember the damn name of it. Warhammer 40,000. Ultramarines, I think it's called. A, because it's about Ultramarines. B, because it's absolute garbage. And C, because it's just... It makes it makes Star Trek The Motionless Picture, as the old joke goes, look like an action-packed summer blockbuster. It just makes Battlefield Earth seem well-written. It's just the worst film ever. And it's kind of ironically uh, apt for this. Uh, there is the Grey Knight steel paint for them, or easy to experiment with silvery greys, as says Eon's car. Yeah, about the Grey Knights. You can get this, that, uh, that uh, steel, Grey Knight steel, or whatever it's called. Steel, I can't remember the name of it. But yes, there is a specific paint for them. However, I did at one point acquire myself the official Citadel tint set. So I could do Grey Knights by getting Lead Belcher or something, or Iron Breaker, and adding a little bit of the blue tint to it. And then I didn't get around to it, and I've got a pack of tints now that are no longer in production. I've not used them yet. I may need to at some point, though, because I need to make my own um, Lamenters yellow. Uh, <clears throat> as long as it doesn't go wahoony shaped it will be fine. Yes. I was absolutely blue-screened last night, says Raging Modeler. Uh, Manos, the hands of fate, has to be in the running. Without the MST3K, it's truly painful. I've not seen that. I'm not aware of that film. But you're getting into vintage. There's a difference, though, between like bad films and vintage bad films. Because vintage bad films are kind of in your B-movie, C-movie territory. That's a whole different genre, really. Just in terms of bad films. Yeah. I would have said Battlefield Earth, but it's been superseded by Space Marines, Ultramarine, or whatever the hell it's called. Terrible. Terrible. I don't recommend anybody ever watch it, ever. I would recommend for, for gits and shiggles that you watch Battlefield Earth, because it's so bad, it almost 360s back to awesome. Not quite. Almost. Um, But, yeah. Don't ever watch the Ultramarines movie. It's terrible. Mayhem says uh, he had that much booze last night. He was totally conquered, trailered out his mind. He was totally chiseled. Absolutely fandangled he was. It's good if you can make it like multiple syllables as well. 
It was ultimately, it was absolutely spamtacular. I don't know, just acular and angled seem good ways to end words that suggest drunk or uh, some in, or some other way incapacitated in some way or shape. Like a radar dish, don't need this now. Like a little radar antenna. Going to go like there to see. First, let us assemble the antenna. Then we shall assemble and apply the antenna to the vehicle. Vehicle. Because uh, it's got wings on the back, you can tell which way around it's supposed to go, which is kind of handy. Which way around does it go? It goes the correct way around. Question answered. Step myself away from that glue. Don't get too close to that glue. It will not do you any favours. It is not your friend. Bit more on there, I think. Yeah, I'm going to leave that for a minute just to set and cure enough that I can then jam it into place with the ham fists of ham and fisting. And wait, I'll rephrase that. That was that was a bad choice. <laughs> yeah. Uh, uh, 20 is the traffic light of exploding whatever this may be we'll go back to traditional non brain melting glue how are you doing George we doing okay buddy oh that's flashing off so I need to work quick that is attachificated Mm -hmm. I'm put a little bit on the top of it here. You might not realise why, but it's because I sanded it a little bit roughly. It's got some little sanding marks on there. And with the top of that gun, a little bit of a rough scratch from some sanding. So I'm just going to smooth it off a little bit. Gentlemen, smooth your surfaces. Uh, and we then have that radar or rectenna, whichever one it is. Let us see if we can attach this without destroying it. Yes. I think that should be fine. Ping. Oh no. <laughs> mm. We can attach it without bending the bit we've just stuck on off. I've got to push it in place, but what I need to do is get rid of the seam line, the mold line that's on it, that's stopping it fitting in the hole. I'll look at chat in a moment. Sadly, I can't see. Chat's a complete blur when I'm this far, this distance with my with my telescopic uh, spectacles on. Everything's just a blur over there right now. I shall have this pointing out that way, I think. Or maybe not. Maybe, maybe you don't want it to go there. Uh, it's going to task me now. I'm not going properly, isn't it? It's going to be a pain. Not fit in the hole. That's it. Fit issues on a Warhammer on a Games Workshop kit. Well, I never. That is not richtig. Verdammte thing. Don't want to go in, does it? Well, we're going to glue it now anyway. It will stick when I apply glue to it. Handy tip, by the way, if you're trying to glue something and it is a bit of a tight fit and it's not quite going in, like you, especially when you've got like a a peg and a round round peg and a round hole, occasionally you'll get one where it doesn't quite want to go in, and usually just because of a slight misshape or one's a little bit too big or something like that. Handy little tip: if it's a very tight fit, sometimes a very thin layer of glue, maybe a tummy extra thin. Can just be enough to lubricate it when it goes into the into the slot, uh, uh, and then of course it will glue it in place when it cures. But it can sometimes mean that you, if you've got a very tight fitting part, don't panic too much. Just get a very long dry time glue on there, and it'll probably be all right. That's that bit done. Uh, let's chat doing. No, nope, no, nope, too many jokes. Uh, where are we? The hands of I've done that one. Uh, he had that much booze last night. I've done that one. 
Starship Troopers is awful. Starship Troopers is pretty bad. Totally Sparkle Barker, the where that he was flapping in the breeze. It was made on a bet by Texas fertilizer salesman. He wrote, directed, and starred just brutal in his ineptitude. Oh, the hands of fate. Oh, yeah. I was totally lighthouse last night on Dr. Pepper. <laughs> Never. I was so discombobulated, my smatterings of ululations were complete wazzocked in the globulousness. Just talking nonsense now, aren't we? Uh, George says, doing the best I can. Big hugs, dude. Big manly bro hugs. I've seen the Mystery Science Theatre 3000 Treatment of Manos, The Hands of Fate, which was brilliant send-up. The un mst would MST film is now jaw droppingly bad movie. Yes. I take it, uh, says Mayhem to Modeler, I take it with the alchemical mixulations you were inherently foaming at the mouth and availed of the awesomeness of complex imbibings. Yes. Uh, the movie itself is public domain, so you can find it on the YouTube, says Dan. Lynn says she just did a spontaneous buy yesterday on Amazon Prime Day. I bought an Instapot. Now I can cook good food. Cool. Should have given me a shout. I could have added it to my store for you. Uh, I can cook good food. Yes. Wazzocked in the globulousness. Sounds like someone played kickabout with the trouser area. Yeah, that's what I was thinking. Uh, Lim says, be right back. Cats made a noise. And I must see if they knock something over. Yes. If the cat makes a noise, they'll deliberately do something that makes a noise purely purely to get you to go and check what they've done because they'll have done something and gone ha now i'm going to get you to go over and look at the chaos that i've ensued they'll knock something off the mantelpiece purely because they know you'll hear it and come running and then they'll sit there going ha ah, what are you gonna do about that eh what are you gonna do about that you still got fever you can't kick me out and abandon me <laughs> cats can be evil do darn i was at work i couldn't says lynn oh well never mind um, swig of water. Oh, sorry, that was probably really loud. I banged the microphone with my glass. I bet that was really, really loud. Sorry about that. It's Oz. Right, I need my sharpie. Because I need to, I need to mark off what we've built so far. Eh, all of that. There you go. Done. Lovely, lovely. That's that page done. Wow, they really are kind of pushing the boat out with use of page space here, aren't they? <sighs> You've never thought you could make that a bit bigger and have them lower down. Never mind. Moving on. Oh, still more weapons. Oh, there's all weapons on this vehicle, aren't there? Now, we have to choose a variant now. Let's have a look at the options. Choose the variant you want to build, and there are no descriptions of any of them. We have a big Gatling gun, and the guy's pointing it. We have a big Gatling gun, and the guy's pointing it. Or none. Okay. So the variant is... You can see this. Space Marine, no helmet, shooting gun. Space Marine, helmet, shooting gun, no Space Marine. Well, of course we're going to have the Space Marine shooting the gun. It doesn't even bear thinking about. Uh, what we need to do is... Is... We have to think logically now because because I don't necessarily want to glue the dude in place and then have to try and paint around that it's easier for me if I can have the dude removable in some way what might be easier is oh, I don't know because he's got it's one of these things where you have his hand his hand holding the grip for the weapon that then attaches to the weapon it might be easier if I can have him and the weapon all assembled but not attached onto the turret. I don't know yet. We shall have to think about this. We shall have to have the considerations. Uh, the repulsor turret can be fitted with a variety of optional weapons and with, with or without the gunner. Our repulsor paint guide shows you how to paint the tank with the gunner attached, but feel free to keep the hatch closed if you wish. If you do choose a use a tech marine gunner, 
Do not glue him into the turret. It will be much easier to paint him separately from the turret. Yes. Oh, I see. This guy's got his arm up over the back of the gun as if he's cocking the weapon. This guy's got both hands on the triggers. Okay, that makes sense. Right. So, we also have to do the... If we're having the do, we have to also glue the, uh, the hatch open. So, what we shall do here is, I think, we shall have the do with the helmet, because I always choose helmets where I can, because it's a lot less work. Uh, we shall make the... Can we make another heavy onslaught Gatling cannon? Another one, really? 51 and 52. I think we can. Can we have a second onslaught cannon Gatling? Ca oh, we can. We oh, oh, oh. oh, right. We can have. Even though we've got the heavy onslaught Gatling cannon on the turret, on the pintle, we can have. Another heavy onslaught Gatling cat. Well, though it won't be a heavy one, it'll be just an onslaught Gatling cannon. Oh. See, I could give him a stubber, but why give him a stubber like that when I can give him another one of these there? And he can be like, burr, 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 burr. he can be making A10 Warthog burr, noises. Because why do you want? Why would you want a gun that goes burr, 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 when you can have a gun that goes? Burr. Yeah, we'll be giving him the uh, the onslaught Gatling cannon. I think. Onslaught Gatling Cannon. Yeah. We'll make that first. Probably get that done before before home time. So we need 52, 51, and uh, 52 and 50. Apparently, apparently, we need parts. And I'm not making this up. We need parts. Are you ready? Is this even in focus? We need parts. 52, 51, 52. And 52. Yeah. Go home, Games Workshop. You are drunk. <laughs> I don't know. Ah, Daka, 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 says Eon's car. More Daka, says George. Yes, I'm going to give him the cannon rather than the... Well, I could give him a lazy weapon, but those weapons are for chumps. George says more Daka. Therefore, I want a gun that just throws all the bullets at the bad guys. Right, so uh, we need 52, 52, 52, and 52, as well as 52, and of course, not forgetting 52. So 51 and 52. Snipping now, sir. All the dark in the world. I've got no idea how I'm going to ship all this stuff to you, George, by the way. It might be like a collection of like 10 skirmish boxes. If it's just like figures, it wouldn't be so bad because I could probably get all the figures from all the Conquest part works into like two or maybe three skirmish boxes. I've got them stored in skirmish cases now or, you know, battle cases, what have you. But it's not quite as simple with these because you've got all these vehicles, all the Ponty aerials and sticky out bits, and that kind of makes it a bit more interesting now. Uh, we need apparently 52 and 52, which is not helping me because we've already got 52. So we need to find the muzzle for that, which is part number five, uh, 50, not 52. You spoon. Wow, I've never seen so many mistakes in a, in a instruction book. And we need part 49A and 49B. 49A and 49B. Put them together yet, 52. I've got to find 49A and 49B now. As usual, they will be in a random place. 49A, 49B. 49A, 49B. There we go, it's 49A. Forty-nine B, yes. B. Right, so we'll get this bit assembled before we call it a day. It is a day. So we have here the parts, yeah, that's it. The nubs first. And it'll be another thing where I glue this together and then 
uh, let the glue splooge out and then get rid of the uh, seams and any egregious nubs at the same time. I'm not going to take the nubs out too much right now where I've got a joint down the middle because that's uh, something you'll get rid of in the cleanup process. Not before. Basically, if you've got two, if you've got something that's like a two half assembly, like a cylinder or a tube, and you've got a nub right on the joint section, don't clean the nubs up until you've glued it together and squeezed the glue out and done your little gap filling. Because otherwise, you might end up with two halves sanded to different degrees and therefore an uneven surface. So you can leave nubs that are right on the edge of a joint of a cylindrical piece or anything like that, or a, not even like on the top here, there's there's two halves. There's gonna be a nub there and a nub on the other side. And on the back part here, I may as well leave that. Fix that when I clean up the joint. Oh slow Gatling cannon debba debba oh way up. I don't think that's how this works, is it? That's how this goes together. Uh what? That goes that way. And this goes, oh, that way. There we go. It's upside down, you spoo. I was like, this isn't the right way up. And then I realized it was upside down. Oh, well, never mind. There you go. Nice and shiny. Uh, however, that bit there, I can see here, there's a nub on the top bit here. Now, this is actually a raised up panel and I can't get to it on the other half. But that one I need to sand now. This one on the back, I can wait till I've filled it. Then I can sand it together. That one underneath there, I can sand that flat. But this one on the top, I need to deal with now. It doesn't have a counterpart on the other side, and it is a raised panel, so that's not a problem. We can do that bit now. There we go. And there we go. It is now done. That is correct. Yes, that's it. That's it. That's it. That's it. And now, gluing times. Oops. And now, falling apart times. I can't wait to open Chris's packet, if you pardon the expression. I can't wait to open that package from Chris and see what it is. I hope it's not something stupidly expensive that I'm going to have to get upset that you spent all that money on me. I mean, upset in a good way, but, you know. I don't deserve expensive spendings. Mm -hmm. Right, so that's the glue in there. Give it a second. And squish. Squeeze it together. Squeezing now. Of course. Squeezing now, sir. There she is. Remember the whole point of this glue? It melts the plastic. And by squeezing it together now and not getting it there, uh, squeezing it together after a few seconds, the melted plastic bubbles up through the gap, filling the gap that was behind it and causing a little bead of glue that we can then later sand down, leaving nothing but a nice flat filled gap that's no longer a gap because it's just not there anymore. Now remember, folks, if you hate filling gaps like I do, if, and if you're utterly lazy like I am, do it this way. If it's a tiny, tiny gap, this way you can save yourself any filling later on. Don't make it work for yourself. When it comes to making models, there's absolutely no shame at all in shortcuts and quick fixes and, you know, weaselly hiding things that have gone wrong by using plastic card and things like that. There's no shame in that at all. I openly admit I'm the laziest model maker in the world. And I will happily use shortcuts. If I know the shortcut will look as good as the, the not shortcut. I'm not cutting corners because I can't be bothered. I'm cutting corners where I can get an equally as good a result by using a lot less in, uh, intensive method. For example, yes, you can airbrush, you can pre-shade uh, and airbrush carefully and get lots of panel shading and effects like that. You can do. If you want to be a bit lazy, 
but get just as good an effect, you can do that with dry brushing. Not always valid, and you need to have the confidence that what you're going to do is going to look just as good. And there's, there's things I know I can do that will look, for the most part, as good as the more industrious, drawn out version of doing it. Now, this ammo box thing has got a massive seam line right down the middle and a nub. What I shall do, I've not glued it yet, but I'm going to very quickly remove some of that nub. Carefully as I can, it's a flat surface. I'm receive most of it, but not all of it, because what I'll do is I'll come back later and clean that up. The same thing here. It's, a magazine, it's like a magazine for the weapon, I guess, or a power pack. Get the glue in the middle, and then we'll squeeze it. I like to squeeze it, squeeze it. We'll get the glue in there. The tricky thing is not just getting your hand all over the, the gluey mold line that you just created. And thereby removing it or squishing it. Now that go there. And now we shall very carefully squeeze. Ready? This is big enough that I don't need to spin it round in my hand now. Squeeze it like that. Try not to touch that centre part because I don't want to dab the bead of glue, of plastic and glue out of the way and remove the bead. It's important you have that bead of plastic because that's what you sand back to then leave no gap whatsoever. There we go. That can go there. This can now go on the end. No, I can't because I've not filed that yet. Oh, was a stupid thing to do. What it, Fox? Please apply the glow before you've even filed the bit off the end. Thank you very much. Bye. There we go. Quick did of that because it's fine. A bit of glue on there. Oh, if you can completely not glue it on properly, that'd be fine. Thanks. Oh, come on, go in the hole. Get that on there. A little bit of the sploob that came out there because I fumbled it. We can get that rid of that with some extra thin just to melt it down. Squeeze that on. Done. Cool. Barrel sorted. Again, there's a little squeeze of glue there. But there's supposed to be a gap, a panel gap there, because of course it's the, it's the tip of the barrel. So if there's a little tiny sort of panel line, that's absolutely fine. It's meant to be there. We'll leave that to one side. I can't put the magazine on yet because I'll need to sand that magazine down. The power pack to uh, get rid of that mold line. Uh, and that there. Uh, what are we on? Quarter two. I think what we'll do is we'll leave, we'll leave it there, I think. I've got to do the dude as well. Uh, and that's going to take us past four o'clock. So what I'll do, I shall take off my magical viewing device. Right. Uh, let's have a quick look at the chat before we go. My wife loves her Instapot, says Dan. So do I because of the goodness that comes out of the cookings. We had a slow cook yesterday. It was chicken and veggies and stuff. And oh, Mama Fox uh, put some bits in and she was like, I'll put some of that hot chilli sauce in. I'm like, hello. Wow. Because she's not the big fan of the hot chilli stuff, hot spicy stuff. When we, when we eventually get slow cooked and we ate it later on, it was like, wow, that's got a kick to it. It was really nice. But even Mama Fox finished her bowl full. I'm like, how did you eat that? You can't eat hot stuff because you're evil. But she did. <sighs> Pin him giving wire legs as mayhem. What are we talking about? Magnets. No, it's more the tricky thing is the guy's arms are attached to the gun because his hand is moulded holding the trigger. So... Uh, what I need to do is basically, I need to be able to paint his chest. Now, if I glue him to the gun, it's basically his him there like this, and then the gun sticking out. I can I can get underneath it to paint his chest, but not if he's glued in. 
I need to be able to make sure that I can glue him to the weapon in such a way that I can then drop him in and he will fit in there and the weapon will slot into the pintle because the weapon sits in the pintle there. And there's nothing worse, and I've done this before, than you glue the guy holding the weapon, but you don't glue him to the weapon, but you get his arms in the right place. You assemble the weapon and then when it comes to put them together at the end, you've got the weapon glued in place and the arms don't quite line up. And he's holding a trigger that's like that. So it's, it's a little bit fiddly, but it's doable. It's doable. Hey. Uh, Paul DiTomaso is in. Hey, Paul. He says, OK, I believe the pain is related to my heart problem. Ooh. Well, hopefully they're getting it sorted for you, buddy. Chat for some reason has stopped. There we go. Hello, what's going on, says Paul. I was having a bit of a Wednesday, Wednesday Warhammer stream because um, Colin and Chris and Ted are streaming today, so I thought I'll join the club. I'll do a bit of streaming as well. Uh, where are we up to? 100% pure, unadulterated, neat water. Right. You do think with what they charge, they could afford a proofreader. Yeah, really. Now, when I was young, a friend of mine grew catnip in his parents' garden. For fun, we'd harvest a bunch and would ride our bikes around the neighbourhood. <laughs> Gleefully placing the flowers in front of cats that were lounging on their owners' porches. It was great fun watching them bombed out of their tiny little heads. <laughs> Chris says, open my package. I can't. It's got being quarantine. I can't, dude. So, hive mind, what fighter jet has the coolest paint scheme? Um, they, Those German um, demonstration air show ones that have got all the tiger stripes and stuff on them tiger feet look up tiger feet I think it's tiger feet tiger feet they're all like tornadoes and stuff but they have a kind of tiger pack on them it won't be entertaining to watch if fox waits too long to open the package and all the bees have died i know that would suck wouldn't it says candy Graham. i like what you're thinking though so why is fox having a warhammer stream today i've just done that one i've just answered that because uh, i because everybody else did a stream, and I thought, you know what, I'm stream. Because what? Because what I thought, like I said, I think I said earlier, what I was when I watch other people stream, I like to support like my friends' streams by watching them. But when I watch them, I have to do something else at the same time. So I'll, I'll play a video game. But I can't sit and play video games from half four today and not have done any work because I feel bad. But this way, I get to do some work, and then I can play video games later while I'm watching Colin and Ted and Chris's streams. Yay! Uh, Lynn says Oregon Air National Guard F-15 Eagle 75th anniversary wasn't Tiger Feet a song it was I'm not going to sing it not for copyright did Colin have a stream today Colin's having a stream Colin and Dave are streaming at half four so in about 45 minutes about 40 minutes that's why I'm finishing now uh, they're streaming at half four about half an hour 40 minutes uh, Chris will be streaming at 7 p.m. So that's Colin at Festa 67's workshop. We'll start at half four. Chris over at Gross Models is streaming at 7 p.m. I don't know what he's streaming though. Uh, it's Wednesday, so we'll be doing Wooden Wednesday, I guess. It's one of his little wooden thingies. I never get normally a chance to watch this because it's when I'm making the dinner when he's doing a stream. Uh, and then uh, Ted is doing his stream uh, at 9 p.m. on Skipper Scale Models. Uh, and he's painting some figures, apparently. There you go. Right, so I shall leave these two a glue. Uh, I may, I may crack on with them a bit later on while I'm watching everybody else's stream. I might just carry on and get the Space Marine built. I might carry on and just end up getting this finished, to be perfectly honest. Because once I've built the dude with the gun, um, that's kind of it. There's just some accessories to glue on. So, yeah, that might be it. Uh, and then what I will do. The only things that are left to do then are some bits of scenery and those goddamn Space Marine bikes. And I'll probably do them off camera. So once this is built, I'll see what's left to put together. And it might be that that's the end of the building phase for you know the live stream building phase for Warhammer Sundays. In which case, we'll start something new on a Sunday. I've got plenty of other Warhammer kits that need building up. So there we go. But that's going to do us for today. So thank you very much for watching. Uh, Gross Model says it's Metal Earth tonight. Cool. He's making metal thingies. Yes, thank you very much for watching. Where's me? Where's my little bag for this? I've lost my little envelope now. Where's me? Where's my little? There it is. 
These are in the uh, in the in my Amazon stores, by the way. Links in the description below this video for my three Amazon stores: US, UK, and Canada. These are available. I recommend the four diopter two times zoom. They are the most powerful ones. They're really good if you wear glasses. If you don't wear glasses, they're kind of useless. Uh, yes, thank you very much for watching. Uh, I really appreciate it on this uh, um, impromptu stream. I will occasionally maybe do more of these. I've actually sorted out all the graphics. You see, I've sorted out all the graphics and stuff now for these in the title. So I'm not. it's not like I'm never going to do a Wednesday Warhammer stream again. Of course I am. I just don't know when yet. I won't make a habit of it because I've got stuff to do normally. Well, that's going to do us. Uh, yeah, take care of yourselves. Um, don't forget, like I say, the streams from the guys tonight. I will be back uh, on uh, Friday for Fallout Friday. I'm going to be doing some more filming for the... Uh, tabletop trauma center i'll give you a sneak peek i'm just about to start the painting so that's where we're up to i've got the priming done i'm just about to start the painting i've actually spent yesterday sorting out new camera angles and filming processes so that's why i didn't get much painting and the weird thing is this still smells like detol so eventually when this is done and somebody eventually gets to buy this they'll in they'll get a, a lehman rust that has this kind of detol smell which is fantastic because it will forever smell of Dettol. Forever. Forever. It will smell like Dettol. And this is weird. This looks like some kind of weird Russian remote control tank with a big, like, radar, radome and AI unit in the top. It's kind of nightmare fuel. You actually built that into it. It's like the Emperor Dalek with his massive round head that just looks really creepy because it's wrong. Like the Emperor Dalek of strange tanks. Anyway, that's going to do us. Uh, yes, thank you very much for watching. Go and watch the other guy's streams tonight. Enjoy the rest of your Wednesday. Uh, until next time, I shall say, take care of yourselves. Go make something awesome like these. Go be awesome. Wear a mask, wear gloves, social distance. Be safe, be careful. Let me check the buttons are working. Yep. Uh, be careful, be safe. I will see you all soon. Take care. Adios, amoebas. That's the wrong button, you fool. Oh, I forgot where the title off. Oh, I messed it up. I forgot which button it was. Adios, amoebas.